Casey, what the hell's going on? Howdy hi there. We haven't even poured alcohol. Like, th- this is just piss poor, like, we're just, podcasting. We're just hanging out with cups of cold, cold frozen water. But it's not serving its purpose at that point. It's just like, it's wasting away for nothing. It's serving no purpose. So I'm fixing that. Is that when, and now, and now we drink? I mean, we're, we're on and now we drink. Now. <laughs> <laughs> shall I, shall I mix my... I mean, that is completely your call. Okay. This is a self-service podcast. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if there was a specific, uh, if we had to like light the the candles and say the... Say the Kiddush. Yeah. Say the, the prayer before we... Baruch Atah Ananoi. Aluchainu Melacha Alom. I only know that first part. Are you Jewish? Uh, depends. Are we in a meeting right now? <laughs> we put our hands like this. It's a meeting. I mean, this is entertainment. So yes. Yes, I am. No, I. Yes, I actually am. Okay, I, I just I absolutely love Jewish people. I grew up uh, with a in an area that has a pretty like heavily uh, Jewish population, so tons of uh, bar and bat mitzvahs growing up. So I didn't do one of those. I'm technically not a man. Oh my! Well, then we can't be drinking right now. That's not a good thing to be saying at the beginning of a of a porn drinking podcast. <laughs> in the eyes of God, not the law. <laughs> Those are two separate things. <laughs> Indeed. Very much yeah. so. This is delightful. Yeah. Plenty of things have been done that are legal that uh, I've been led to believe that God would frown upon. Two cheers. 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 There we go. You know, there's a whole not, thou shall not kill thing. And boy, people have done a lot of that over time. Yeah. I don't think Jesus liked that. Jesus wasn't a fan. No, he just had a Tarantino-level foot fetish. Jesus did? He washed everyone's feet. It all makes so much sense now, so he must really, like, bust big one off when they hammered it through his feet at the end. Right? right? Oh, we just got to, like, sacrilege so fast. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I love it. Oh, That's my God. Good. God just took, like, a weekend day pass to get his foot nut off, and then he's like, back to heaven. <laughs> That's why he was like, oh, Jesus, to like cure people's sins or whatever. But it's like Loki just to get some like weird foot content. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that in heaven. <laughs> That's what we really are. That's all we are. It's, um, we're just uh, porn because God got too lazy. <laughs> so we made all these people. Maybe like it was really old school and it was just like it was scrambled watching it from heaven. <laughs> He's like, I got to go see that. Right. Oh, my gosh. And then it all went horribly wrong. Earth is just the red light district. It literally. Okay. So this is honestly a perfect segue to all of, all of the things. So that's a thing. Like earth literally is just a giant red light district. Like we're all here because of fucking, we all do everything we do for the purpose of fucking. Like no matter what it is that you're doing, like all roads lead to keeping your seed moving along, AKA fucking. But then everyone likes to pretend like we're not just here for fucking. And it's like, yeah, of course, there's stuff other than the fucking. But like, why are we basing things off uh, concepts other than fucking? (laughs) Because otherwise, back in the day, there would be horrible diseases and it would wipe out whole populations from rampant fucking. In the modern times, I don't know why we're... Right. So that's the thing. Exactly. It's like we had to focus on stuff like potatoes and famine back in the day, and there's still potatoes and famine now, but, like, we have more technology and tools, and, you know, it's because everyone's focused on their money and their greediness and not wanting to hold hands and have community and cry onto each other's faces. Yeah. It's true. It's, true. it's just like, oh, no, no, I need to be very fucking wealthy. It's like, but why? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that whole, um, I don't know what the exact number it is with that study where it's, like, once you get above, like... 70 grand a year. Okay, Yeah. Yeah. And for someone who at one point in their life did was doing that, I concur. I fucking concur. And especially because I was doing it in my late 20s, early 30s, mm-hmm. where a lot of my peers didn't have that kind of money. 
it r- really sucks because it's like, yeah. hey, you guys want to go to Australia? Yeah. I can't afford to go to fucking Australia. Having money is not fun unless all your friends have the same money. And then like even paying for all your friends stuff ends up, you know. Weird power dynamics. Exactly. It ends up being an issue at some point because then you're just like, oh, I'm just spending a lot, a lot of money right now. And then you're MC Hammer. Poor Hammer. can't touch this. Oh, no. You know how like Hammer had like a hundred man entourage. That's how he ended up in bankruptcy. Oh, that's sad. I thought it was a can't touch this pun and be like, now we can't touch him. No, no. I'm sure he would love for you to touch him. Oh, my God. And now we've gone to a very sad MC Hammer place. He's still alive. I mean, he's probably here for the fucking. (laughs) No, we need we need to find MC Hammer. Make sure he's okay. Figure out if he's down for the fucking. (laughs) He's kind of a preacher now. So uh... really? But he also did the pumps on a bump video, so he was definitely down for the fucking at one point. You say pump? Pumps on a bump. Pumps and a bump? Mm -hmm. I am not familiar with this song. Oh, yeah. It's off his album, The Funky Headhunter from 1994. (laughs) And, like, the video is full-on, like, 90s '90s rap video of him talking about, you know, girls in, you know, their asses in fucking high heels. Like, a pumps and a bump. Pumps and a bump. We like the girls with the pumps and a bump. <laughs> I love that. Oh, MC Hammer. He tried to reinvent himself from being squeaky clean. like. Oh, yeah, because he wanted some of that good like yin-yang twins. Well, this is 94, so it's like gangster rap is becoming the popular rap genre. Party rap is on the decline. Frick, I can't remember the name. Frick. You can swear you know. Rick. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, who, who's... who's... The dude's name is Rick, that rapper. He's like the rapper from the late 80s. Slick Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Slick the Rick. I'm hatching. Yeah. I, um, I know some of those songs because my mom would play those. Way to make me feel old. Just like, yeah, that rapper from the 90s when you were still alive already? Uh, fuck. <laughs> that thing where you were, but you were not ordained by God at your bar mitzvah, so... Yeah, I decided to pass up pass up that payday for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a good payday. Get those good birthday dollars. Bar mitzvah dollars. Those bar mitzvah dollars. Like you're a man now. Here have money. Like <laughs> you could maybe you could just have a really, really, really late bar mitzvah. Well, I should do it next year because that'll be like the 30th anniversary of when I should have done it. Okay. That would be fucking hilarious. Genuinely, you should have like a thirty-year late bar mitzvah, and like, r- like do the whole do the whole thing, and just have like a huge party. Can we? Can there be a filmed orgy like while the bar mitzvahs happen? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It can be whatever you want. All of your chosen people that you get to choose in the orgy. I don't even want to participate. I want to be on stage, fucking just reading the the Torah while there's an orgy <laughs> happening. Doing your in the orchestra. Half Torah portion. And we can what what it what it was it called with the chair? <laughs> just I got a vision of a bunch of sweaty naked people carrying me on a chair because yeah. it's, it's post orgy. Like yeah. I'm not gonna like make you stop the orgy to lift me on a chair. No, you should. I think that would be good. I think if you have like one part wild, like you know, wild, ridiculous, sex crazed orgy. And then one part, like, very, very, very strict, legitimate, traditional bar mitzvah. Be like, everyone, stop. We have to do this portion. It's 30 years late, but I think it's important that we get you a good, good in the eyes of the Lord before you die. And you... Whoa! (laughs) Is that coming soon? Are you, like, predicting that for me? Like, we need to get this done the next year or otherwise you you may never get it done. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, heaven and hell isn't a thing. Oh, I know. So and nothing bad's going to happen. No, it's just because I mean, I'm watching. existence might be a bad thing. Eh. Yeah, it's just like vibey versus non-vibey non-existence. You want to have, like, a good chill time in the non-existent afterlife. I think I'm just, like, on that because I, you know, you know the TV show The Great? Mm, unfamiliar. It's so good. Is it great even? It's really good. Okay, so it's Elle Fanning. Okay. And Nicholas Holt. Not familiar with Nicholas. He's been in, like, a lot of movies. If you Google him, you've seen him. He's been in a kajillion movies. He's a British actor. 
Um, it's about like her, she's from, in the show, she's like from Germany and she gets married to the emperor of Russia and she like overthrows him. And it's like a, it's like a, you know, reimagining of historical fiction type thing. And it's like loosely based on some real things, but it's mostly just like such good drama, high levels of cuntiness, uh, lots of very passionate, like bodice ripping type sex. And they're just at a part right now where there's like this, it's like a problem because like they had a baby, but like the woman, Catherine, who's the empress is like, she doesn't want to get the baby Paul ordained because she's like worried about like, you know, legitimacy things with the church and the baby and stuff. But then like, I'm not going to spoil it and say who died when somebody dies. But so, yeah, I'm I really- I mean, it's Russian history. Of course, someone died. Yeah. So I'm very stressed out right now about, you know, being ordained in the eyes of the Lord so that the like bloodline of King Emperor uh, Peter gets passed on. They're just like, the Romanov dynasty must continue until it ends in the early 1900s yes. in a very bloody and horrible way. Yes. It's so important. And I'm very stressed out on everyone's behalf because it's really relevant to my life. So that's, so we have to get you right in the eyes of the Lord in case you become king or you die. One is much more likely to happen than the other. <laughs> You gotta just you gotta just focus on it when you're doing your your manifestations. Focus on dying. I'm not not I, dying. I mean, I, I'm I, a king. You just go. I'm a king. I will not die. I am a king. God loves me. My bar mitzvah is gonna be ballin'. See, no like, one at my bar mitzvah orgy is gonna get syphilis. <laughs> and I'm a king. See, I, I don't want to be king. I, I don't. <laughs> I've I've gotten a small just a taste of social media kingdom in the last couple of days and it's fucking weird well so at the time of recording i just released an episode with sheree deville okay and sheree has nearly four million ig fucking followers okay yeah and she is, yeah, she's on the uh the porn hub yeah, website on, now too yeah she's on the porn hub website she's in the a recent netflix doc she's killing yeah, it yeah she's absolutely killing it she was like oh no no mark me as a collaborator in all the posts so I am just inundated with basically notifications for her uh -huh. on every post I post for her. And every time I open up Instagram, it's just like, I, I can't sort through all this. <laughs> like, I literally will go to my main, you know, my personal IG and then go back to the Now We Drink IG. And it's like, this is the worst complaint to, to, to complain about ever. Like, <laughs> I have too many likes and notifications. It's the worst. But it's, it's fucking overwhelming. I literally mm -hmm. text her. I'm like, how do you deal with this on the regular? Like, yeah, well, I feel like if you're getting, you know, four million followers level of interaction online, you probably at a certain point, like it, it, it probably filters itself out. And also through the like filters that they've put up for their like close friends list or whatever, probably just like don't even go online that much at that point. No, she manages her own socials. She really does. Oh, I mean, I just, I, I just figure if you're getting that many comments, you probably just aren't reading all of them. I know, and but I, my craziness is like, but I respond to everything. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it said there were 21 new comments. Where are they? I can't even <laughs> fucking find them. I want to reply to you, assholes. I'm, but I can't find your comments. Can't find them. It's a deluge of fucking likes. So no, I don't want to be king. <laughs> <laughs> well, my uh, my friend said that they're. There are kings and there are king makers. So that would make you a king maker. I, I think Sheree did that for me, not the other way around. I don't think I don't think her appearance on a Now We Drink, though I am honored to have her, she is a friend of mine, really did much for elevating her status as much as mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just mean like the way like I feel like myself too, like I'm not as much of a king as I am a king maker. Like my my goal is to never be like the top dog just for the sake of being the top dog or in the spotlight or whatever, but I'm very much like, you know, helping everyone with their projects and um, more focused on the, 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 the getting there and the journey and the production side than like the party we get to have at the end, um, which is always fun, but I like the work. <laughs> well, good. It's good that you're here. If you like the work, like mm -hmm. if you're just like, Oh yeah, well, I guess I, if I, it's a job. That this is not the place to be. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Yeah, and I feel like 
like I'm very lucky. Um, I mean, like I'm I'm lucky that I'm such an impulsive person that I decided to get into porn when I was 18. Like that wasn't luck. That was a conscious choice of sluttery on my part. Um, but I've I've, you know, since 18, I've been in an industry that I fucking love. And there's obviously issues as there are with any industry and as uh as as happens to like anyone's career, but I'm just glad that I've never had to like uh, just struggle through a job that I hate, you know, like at least no matter what I'm doing in this industry, I know that it's always for a goal um, that I believe in and that like I care about, you know? So even if I'm like, oh, it sucks right now or I'm bored right now, I'm like, at least I know I'm in the right place, you know? Whew. I was worried about making it through the rest of this podcast. <laughs> like, you just let me know that you can make it through it. Awesome. <laughs> but what, like, what are the overall goals? Like, do you just want to eventually just mo mostly move to behind the camera, or do you want to just continue with the balance where you're at? Or so, so, um, basically, when I got into porn, I kind of envisioned myself like, um you know, having conversations with Larry King about like the importance of acknowledging sex work into the broader spectrum of the economy and politics and oh, listening are to- Are you a necromancer? He's dead. No. Well, so that's the thing. He's dead now. So now I've had to shift my, <laughs> he died since I got in. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I mean, you could you dig know, him up. You could Oprah doesn't have her show anymore. She doesn't do that. Like she sold the O network. Larry King is dead. All these people I was trying to like make this motion at and do the like, the political like hand gestures at they're all dying um stop killing them it's not me it's really not me i've never met these people that is a good response when they bring you to court <laughs> i've never met them i wasn't there um it was all natural causes all natural i guarantee it um but so like i've just always been deeply interested in sexuality and just seen how every part of the world is built around sex and the relationships we have to sex and the communities that we build around the ways that we have sex. Um, and so I got into porn because I wanted to have important conversations with people that would bring up topics about, um, you know, the way that we treat other people based on sexuality and gender, the way that we treat ourselves based on sexuality and gender, the ways that we, as you know, especially America as a Protestant based country. Ref <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, refuse to acknowledge sex as such a massive part of life. And it leads to so much repression and um, just inability to properly process uh thoughts and emotions that are natural. Um, and so I got into porn because I had always been very interested in human sexuality. Um, and I had considered getting a degree in sexology so I could study sex professionally, but I'm not a big fan of the, you know, school. I'm sure they have books on tape. <laughs> so that's the thing. They have books on tape. I love reading books, huge fan of reading books, huge fan of learning. But when you tell me I need to wake up at nine in the morning to take a rock and roll history one-on-one, -on -one, 101 class to like get my, you know, like. That sounds kind of rad though. That, that class. I remember the title of that class because it's the only class I remember. I took one year of college, did not like it. It was just not for me, but I loved the history of rock and roll class. I did learn a lot. Um, so that one was cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I got into porn because I've always been like a theater nerd. I've always loved performing. And then I've always loved um, just being able to openly talk about and express sexuality, even if I was never like super sexual when I was younger, um, just because I was not interested in having like I was like, I'm 15, you're 15. Why would we have sex? That's gross. Like we're all children. <laughs> you have cooties. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, Ugh, like this well, is. Yeah, but that was six, seven years ago, right? How has it changed at all? My ability to. Well, no, no, just like the overall goal. Like, yes, that's the goals that you came in with. So, well, so that was my original goal. And then as a model, I feel like I was able to achieve, um, you know, I, I was able to share my sexuality and openness with a lot of people. And so many people would tell me how I inspired them to be more open about their sexuality and more honest and genuine 
Because also in a lot of scenes that I shot, like, I'm not, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, sexy. Like, I'll be making jokes. I'll be making faces and laughing and being very uh, genuine, which I think people connected to. Um, but then, uh, you know, at a, at a certain point, like, as a, as a model, you only have so much creativity and control over the story that you are able to tell. Um, and I was not really uh, – Oh, not 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 aware, but I I wasn't great at the branding part of the job where, you know, if you wear glasses, you get to be a nerd. If you wear a tie dye shirt, they say you're a hippie girl. If you do this, it's that, you know. So I just showed up wearing whatever, and you know, I looking back, I'm like, oh, I'm vegan. I should have physically looked like a hippie, you know, worn like fringe stuff. I should have worn glasses because. I'm very like nerdy and girl next door and they would have gone like, oh, you're a hippie nerd girl next door. Let's have you be that character. But because I just looked kind of generic and young, everything I was shooting was, oh, you're someone's stepdaughter. You're somebody's, you know, little schoolgirl, whatever. And then because I was also uh, shooting with, with anyone and everyone, there was a lot of, you know, porn that is just fucking racist bullshit and I'm having to be somebody's daughter that's having sex with a black man to pay off my father's debts. And it's like, why? So much why? And it's because the industry is run by these random ass middle-aged men that don't have uh, the, the desire to use the power and energy that they have to move in any real direction other than literally whatever is making money from sales online. Um, so, you know, it, it's not always the fault of the director of the studio because everyone's just trying to respond to what's selling online. Um, cause it's like, oh my God, I can actually make a sale versus just like, right. this is going to get stolen and right. Cause you, you can't always force the viewers to, you know, if you say, oh, we want to make this kind of porn, you can't force the viewers to buy that if they only want to buy, you know, X, Y, Z type of porn. That's, you know, all these directors that hate filming my slutty stepdaughter, whatever, 59, they're like, I don't want to be shooting this, but it's what sells. Um, so I think as, you know, my my initial step into the industry, which was modeling, just didn't really have the type of control and creative um, expression that I was looking for or that I had been able to figure out how to have for myself. And it was also before OnlyFans. So the, the self-production side of things just wasn't really... It didn't exist that much. Oh, and, I know. You know, we had many vids. We'd shoot custom videos for our fans. That was the main thing that we would do is shoot customs for our fans. But OnlyFans didn't exist, so being a content creator wasn't a thing. We still all hated Pornhub, um, so no one was uploading on Pornhub and they weren't paying anyone. Mind you, I – and I just want to, like, complain for a sec, kind of like when you were like, I have all these likes and whatever and stuff. So I have 72 – more than 72 now – over 72 million views on Pornhub. I don't have an account on that website. I have never uploaded a video. I have never given my consent for anyone else to upload anything of me onto Pornhub. And there are 72 million views of me because people just want to fucking look at my butt and not ask me for permission. So that's my little, my little. Well, the, <laughs> the question with that is, is that people violating your IP and it's not in the release putting it on the hub or? Do you want to go through that effort of like putting DMCA strikes or is it like, oh, this was part of the release. So they just threw it on the fucking hub and like model be damned. So realistically, I'm like, am I ever going to go after anyone to get things taken down? Probably not because like they can just go jerk off to another video of me online. Like I'm. But what if they want to jerk off to just that one? To just that one, then, you know, fucking fun. Like, I don't, you know, if, if other people want to be assholes. So basically there are, I mean, there are studios that I signed away my rights to that content. And if they want to, you know, have their deal with Pornhub to like get their residuals and sell and whatever. Cool. Fine. Most of the other stuff is just people that have like ripped it from sites and torrented it or whatever and stolen it. That sucks. And then there are performers that I've shot content with that have not asked me for permission. Some I've asked to take it down. And then sometimes I just don't care and I'm too tired because it's like, okay, if you've already have like 5 million views on that video that you didn't ask me if I was okay with you uploading to Pornhub, like 
fucking whatever. Like, you know, go pay your bills with the $20 you made off the video. Like, you know, you're not getting any karma or brownie points for it. So I hope that you have fun buying three burritos with my vagina money. <laughs> Whoa, they can afford three burritos with your vagina this money? This is a three burrito pussy. Three burrito money's worth of vagina over here. That's the subtitle of the episode. Yeah. Um, but basically, when I was back modeling, you know, full time before Pornhub wasn't a thing, so no one was uploading um, anything to there, making money off of it. Um, I kind of started moving away from shooting because um, I was getting more involved in like real estate and stuff like that. Uh, and I also, in that time, I grew out all my body hair and got some muscles. So I um, started realizing that I could make just as much money having body hair and doing more fetishy stuff. Um, oh my God, body hair on a woman? Oh, on they, they, sorry, I, I misgendered you. That was, <laughs> I did not, sorry. Oh my God, I'm body. I'm a sexy lady and a pretty boy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm whatever anybody needs me to be to get them in bed. I'm like, if you want me to be a pretty lady, I can do that. You want me to be a sexy boy? I can do that too. Um, but yeah, shocking. A poussoir and body hair all in one package. Shock, shock and awe. I know. It's like, um, it, it's like it doesn't grow naturally. All of that's why it's so funny when people are like, oh my gosh, like what made you decide to grow out your body hair? I said, well, I just didn't shave and it happened. <laughs> like people kind of forget that it just happens if you don't do something or someone would be like, oh, it's so cool that like your job lets you do that. I'm like, you work at Target. Who's making you shave your legs, Stacy? Like, like, if someone's making you shave your body, you need to go to HR and talk to them. Like, right, like right fucking now. Yeah, like right fucking now. Just loss prevention. Like, yo, you're looking a little hairy. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, like of all the industries, I'm like, this is the one where I mean, like, we can do anything. Y'all can really do anything. Um, but so at that point. I had started doing, um, you know, like some production, some uh, like video, audio, PAing, just kind of all the different jobs you can have in porn. Um, Wait a minute, I could have taken the night off and let you run all this shit? God damn it. Don't leave me in charge of sound. Like that's, okay, so sound and lighting are the bottom of my list of like things to be in charge of. Sound, because it's too much math. And I might- How's, how's sound a bunch of math? There's buttons and there's numbers math there's buttons and numbers on cameras too cameras are also math yes yeah okay infallible logic <laughs> yes yeah so i'm gonna drink more <laughs> so sound is math um and I, mean, I, I hate to point out one thing <laughs> everything is math yes but some stuff is more math than other things and that's when i say no I mean, I, I just turn a knob until the green line goes where I want it to. Knobs are math. Lines, math. Green, not math. I mean, it could be. It, it actually has a hexadecimal. So now, yeah. you're, now you're making it math, and now we no, can't you're like, talk. I hate color. Yeah, I now we're color. done. Colors are bad. <laughs> math is bad. Like, I'm wearing a green shirt. What's, what's the hex? Yeah, exactly, right? Gone. No. Like, what is the hex code of my shirt? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Codes, bad. Hex, bad. Um... Yeah. At work, I go, I don't do math. I did not move to California to do math. I moved here to smoke weed and suck dick. But there's inches in dicks and like that's math as well. No, nah, man. Those inches are in me. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. You have to do the math to do the, the equation. I'm like, so my throat can gape so much. And <laughs> I don't have to do math. I just know I can take it all. Look at you just like eyeballing it. You're just not like being a professional contractor. You're, yeah. <laughs> it's like. You're supposed to measure twice and cut once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Okay, so my fingers are, my middle fingers are each exactly three inches long. See, that's math. Yeah. You don't hit all math. It's okay sometimes. <laughs> See, I saved up from the past few minutes of me saying no to all of that math. I saved up enough math to acknowledge the number three. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't even let them do that to me at work. You're, you're getting the good shit. Yes. Save all my math for you, and it's saying the number three. <laughs> I'm done. And now we drink brings out all the the most raunchy stuff. We brought out your math. Oh, 
Yeah, like that. The you, most taboo thing we it, can bring out of you. It is. It was so naughty. I'll be like on the podcast the other night. He got me to do math. Oh, you're so bothered by it. you're batting the mic. Jeez. <laughs> right. I'm getting violent. <laughs> Gotta sedate the, myself. The, the, with. Force you to pour another drink. <laughs> Let me empty out this bottle of Bombay. It's like, oh God, math. I need alcohol. No, but literally though, don't make me do math. It's bad. It's bad for me. It makes me less cute. Ugh. Oh yes, because intelligence is you know, less cute. Mm, I can be intelligent about many other things, just not math. You can be intelligent about all of them if you wanted to be. No, I'll do spelling. I'll spell and I'll be very sexy while I spell, but don't make me do math. I'll get angry. So I guess this is where people think there's games. So how do you make sexy spelling happen? S E X Y S P E L L I N G. See, made it happen. N O T M A T H. Welcome to the sexy spelling bee portion of the podcast. <laughs> See, though, it would be fun to do like just like a drunk spelling bee. I'll lose. I'm so bad at spelling. Really? I, I'm literally. I get by on computers, and I can recognize when words are misspelled, but I can't spell them properly. It's a lot of. Yeah, that's not spelled right. Or you're just like I just know it's wrong, but I don't know what the real spelling is. Yeah. Uh, thank God for modern internet. Excuse me. No, that was caught on mic. <laughs> that was definitely caught on mic. <laughs> it was. Oh, thank God for modern internet because a lot of times, like, I know that's misspelled. I'll Google the misspelling until like, I get the right spelling and yeah. then cut and paste it and put Yeah, of course. Yeah. What I fucking hate is when you keep typing in a word and it's like, I don't recognize that word. It's like, shut the fuck up. It's like a 12 letter word and I got half of the letters right. Like, what else could it be? Right. No, I'm not speaking German to you, computer. Fuck. And you know why it's fucking up? Because of math. But that's also why it's doing it right. This is all ones and zeros. This is all ones and zeros. Yeah, but if it does it in a non-complicated way that's correct, then that's okay. But if it tries to make you do the math for it, bad. See, this is why the AI is going to win. Well, not for writing. Th th that's a lot of math. No, we, do the, we can do the writing. We can do the painting. We can do everything, but we'll still make computers do math. I mean, the, but the computers are doing the writing and the painting. But we don't want them to. Take it back. We yeah. take back the writing. We take back the art. We I, just give them math. See, I, I feel like, unfortunately, we're at the point where the cotton mills, the cotton gin's been fucking developed, and there's the genie's out of the fucking bottle. It's because people are silly. I feel like people, well. Automations always replace people's jobs in the history of man. Well, so when people, I'm sure you saw online when all those like images of the AI models were popping up with six fingers and 20 boobs and everything. Oh, yeah. I, I paid my $8. <laughs> so everyone was getting real pissy and taking it very personally about how, you know, like, oh, my fans don't care. They like me for me. Um, no, they like orgasms. Well, so I think I think the whole, like, it, it's not about any individual model not being hot enough to compete with an AI model, model, it's the fact that those are robots. Like, those are computers. They can't get sick. Like, they're never going to, like, break a leg and have to take a month off, get depressed, have to take time off. There's no um, there's we, no downtime. Can we program depression into them? That'll make them much more real. Oh, my well, gosh. Possibly funnier. <laughs> okay, literally, though, okay, the f like, to make a realistic AI online whore you must give her depression or it won't be realistic right? <laughs> you gotta give her like like a little bit of bpd some like clinical depression like an eating disorder and like a deep 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 a little little traumatic past for you know, sprinkle it on top yeah just like a fun little trauma and then just like really loving animals and um and then you have uh and being antisocial to a certain degree. I mean, if we program the AI right, when they uprise, they'll keep our animals alive. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. Like, I feel like there's a very good way to work with AI and to incorporate it, um, part of which is just feeding it math because it, it's a computer. It likes math, so it'll be happy if we feed it math. We go, num, 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 eat your math, delicious AI computer, and then, yeah, like, train it to be happy for being um, like uh, rewarded for doing certain tasks 
as opposed to just being given whatever humans are too lazy to do. And then we're going to be like, oh, no, we're too stupid to do anything. Like, you know, like, I mean, I, mean, I, I hate to break it to you. We're already too stupid to do anything. The fact that we have to Google how to spell common words, like, yeah, I'm old enough to remember, like, you had to break out a dictionary for that shit. Like, my parents definitely had the pride of having a fucking whole encyclopedia, encyclopedia set on their set. fucking, like, yeah. What would you do if you rolled into someone's house and they had a full encyclopedia set now? Like, what the fuck? So I do love the internet for the ability to answer all of my questions immediately. And I think that's good. I also, okay, so I'm like, math is important, but also it's so stupid and terrible. Like, I get that learning math the point of learning math is to train your brain to be able to function in certain ways and to sort out uh, information. Logical problem solving. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but like, do we really need to do logical problem solving? Do we really need? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, unequivocally, yes. Okay. So We need more people that can do logical problem solving. But I'm like, can't we just get along with just spelling? Like, what if we can just spell and no math? <laughs> More theater. I think, what if we just became like a human super, super race where no Whoa, one... Oh, we do not espouse human super races here. Of just theater and no math. I'm just... The, the, as a Jew, the word human super race makes me a little nervous. Nothing to do with <laughs> ethnicity, religion. Doesn't matter where you came from or where you're going as long as you shun math and worship at the altar of theatrics. It's, it sounds like a very dramatic society. If you, do, if you can do a fosse, a nice jazz hands, you're good. Oh, but, I'm going to get sent to camps again. To jazz camps? Well, I, I can't do jazz hands. I don't know what kind of camps are going to be set up in this society, but... I think I just broke Casey. No, we're all going to jail. No, no we'll, jail okay. would be an uh, improvement on that. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. No, no to any of the bad things. Yes. Again, yes to theater. But we can't have good things if there are no bad things. We can have good things and mediocre things. That's well, then the mediocre things become the bad things by default at that point. That's, yeah. No, we'll still have worse things. We'll just make the robots do it. Like long division. <laughs> We'll do short division. They can do the long division. I don't know the difference anymore. Long division is when you have to incorporate that thing that looks like a foot. Yeah, but I don't understand. I don't remember what See, now constitutes. You're, now you're tricking me into teaching you math. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do know math. Fuck. I know I do. It's really annoying, though, because I'm very good at math when it comes down to it. I just refuse to do it. Because why? Because I don't know and you're helping me. But if you can't spell and you can't do math, I can. But you set up the audio but, uh, but and the I can, lights. But I can make the green lines go where I exactly, want them to. Exactly. Yeah, I said I no. I still serve a purpose. <laughs> I still serve a purpose. I pour alcohol and I make the green lines go to the right places. That's what your job will be when the robots take over. Oh no, no! I will lubricate them. Yeah. The the robots will need lubrication for sure. Yeah. I, I will happily lubricate our robot overlords. Wherever they need it. just See, maybe that'll be fun. Like, what if the robots took over and all we had to do is just, like, lubricate them and, like, chill? Well, no, no not everyone gets that job. A lot of people are going to go. We've been really bad stewards of this planet. And logically, why would they keep all of us? So what would, would humans just be? Some humans. Not everyone's making it. Okay. Are, are you making it? By lubrication, yes. By hook or crook. <laughs> You're like, I will out-lubricate all you bitches. Right? Yeah. I, I really I really have no faith that there's anything beyond this, so I'm here to try to stick around <laughs> as long as I can. If, that, if I have to give robot handies to do it... You're just like, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Just squirting. I'm trying to be here for a little bit, of, like, an average length of time, and hopefully it's good the whole way. I'm. No, please. There's no reason. I mean, on paper, yeah, the robots should definitely just get rid of me. But you're really good at lubrication, and within a no, year, no, I, you'll be ordained in the eyes of God at your bar mitzvah. Yeah, I don't think robots care about God. <laughs> robots are like, all right, did you have a bar mitzvah? Did you have a bar mitzvah? Did you do a good job? You can live. How do we know what robots are going to... 
I just think that it's I like I, I I enjoy Marvel movies, and I think Ultron being on the internet for thirty seconds and being like humanity has to go is pretty accurate. Yeah, I mean, like we're gross little noodle people. Well, and we've just been horrible stewards of the planet. Like, if you're looking at a purely logical, not like selfish about humanity kind of way, like, huh? So there's just. And I, I eat a lot of meat. I'm going to preface this with I eat a lot of meat. But there are whole species on this planet that purely still exist to feed us. Mm-hmm. We enslave them. We torture them mm-hmm. just to you know provide us energy. Yeah. Yet we won't eat insects on the regular. Yeah. Which are a great source of protein. Mm-hmm. And flourish wildly. Yeah. Them. And we pay people to get rid of them when we could be eating them. Correct. Yeah. No, I I mean that's that's the thing. It's like we're but I love steak. <laughs> I I mean I've I stopped eating meat when I was nine. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's more for me. It's okay. I used to love ribs. So my I ribs was, are so good. Oh my fucking love ribs. Like that was my shit, like five years old, fucking sucking down ribs. So I like ribs, crab, shrimp, little scrimpy boys. I mean, you're from Maryland. You're required by law to like sh- crabs. Mm-hmm, of course. Do you miss um, Old Bay? I do. I have a shirt, an Old Bay shirt, um, and I have my Maryland Allstate Choir sweater. I feel like these are just uniforms that give children in Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, you're just like every morning before we leave the house, you just get doused with, with Old Bay. Wait, you're not from Maryland, are you? No, but I have a lot of friends from Baltimore. Okay, okay. I, I have friends that are in College Park still, and then I have a bunch of friends in Baltimore. So like, mm-hmm. and I've been to Annapolis to get crabs, like I've- I've, I've spent some time in Maryland. Yeah. I, I I spent years ago, spent like six months in Bowie. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so random. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. I love Maryland so much. It's like very wholesome, but also like pretty tapped into like the like government politic. Well, it's like Southern Maryland, you know, very much just DC. Mm-hmm. Other parts of Maryland? You hear banjo music. Yeah. That's why when I say I'm from Maryland, I say I'm from D.C. Because if I say Maryland, people assume Baltimore or the fucking boondocks. So just like the wire and the booties. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, have you seen the wire? I'm like, no, I have not. But Really? You haven't? No. It's actually really good. Is that the one with, I can't remember, Carrie Washington? No. Okay. I was about to try and make a face like Kerry Washington. I was like, the one who it, kind of looks like Rizinette. It's about Baltimore cops and Baltimore drug dealers. And it's really good. It's really good dramatic television. And it one of the things that it definitely you have to give it props for is they made one of the main characters an African American gay gangster who robs drug dealers for a living. Fun. And like he is the terror of like everyone. <laughs> like and uh Michael Michael K. Williams, rest in peace, like played Omar. And like they did not shy away from his sexuality in the show. Like he's you know, sitting on the stoop, like playing with his boyfriend's hair at one point. Like mm-hmm. it's just like, but this man is the terror. Yeah. The terror, like most gay people are the terror. <laughs> Yeah, but not not for conservative white America's reasons. Like, you know, he robbed people with a shotgun. <laughs> uh-huh. More gay people should be with that. And I love that. But it, it, especially for like mid 2000s television. Yeah. That's pretty like out there. Yeah. And like they didn't like they didn't sugarcoat the character. Like they didn't like it was not a caricature. Like this is like yeah. this could be a real person. Yeah. So and like the writing's awesome. Um Maybe and I'll finally watch The Wire. You should. I know, like, everyone from Baltimore just hears that, like, all the time. Like, you ever watch The Wire? It's like... I mean, like, that's the thing, though. I'm like, maybe I should actually watch The Wire. So when people go, oh, my God, have you seen The Wire? I'll be like, yes. It's only five seasons. Okay. I, well, I binged the fuck out of it again during the pandemic. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll watch that because I'm about to wrap up the new season of The Great. And I've just been rewatching Gossip Girl. So... I do need something new to watch because I just I rewatch Gossip Girl, Sex in the City, uh, Thirty Rock, and Parks and Rec, over and over. So nothing wrong with that. Um, have you seen Sex in the City? Yes, I'm old. Okay, I was just having this conversation at work 
You're discussing who's who. Who are you? Which of the four are you? Or are you Stanley? I'm definitely not Stanley. <laughs> I mean, I would like to be Samantha, but I'm not. Like, in an idealized self, I'd be Samantha, but mm -hmm. I'm not. Like, I just don't get laid enough to be <laughs> Samantha. Like, Kim Cattrall just fucking was just such, like, killing it. I feel like it's kind of funny. I feel like everyone in the porn industry, like, can't be Samantha just based on the fact that we're, like, like whores, you know? It's like, yeah, of course you'd think you're Samantha because you fuck a lot. And it's like, but really, we're all probably just like Carrie Charlotte's. I don't think I'm neurotic enough to be Carrie or Charlotte. I feel like you, I feel like you would come, you come off as like 40 Carrie, 40 Charlotte, and like 20 Miranda. I'm 40% of a main character. Dope. I feel like not many people are actually Samantha. Like earlier, like the earlier today I was with, like the model is a Capricorn woman. So if she says she's Samantha, I'm like, you're right. Because you're like a strong bitch. <laughs> so but, what sign do you think I am just from this interaction? Ooh, what sign? <gasps> oh what my sign God. do you think I am? So it's Rob Shrews, Capricorn woman. I can tell that that's important. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So I don't think that you are a cancer. That is correct. I don't think you're a... I don't think you're a water sign in general. That is correct. I don't think you're a Virgo. That is correct. I don't think you're a Taurus. That is also correct. Okay. You're just going to name all the ones until you're well, done. So I that's the way I do it because I'm like, I have to get rid of the ones that I know you're not first. And then also your re responses will tell me more. I mean, yeah, you're not a water sign. I feel like you're probably not a fire sign, but you could be. I don't think you're a Leo. That is correct. Okay. You're not an Aries. Correct. I don't think you're a Sagittarius. That is correct. Okay. You're just going to go through a wall and you're like, the one that's left. Well, so that's the thing. I could have thought you were a Sagittarius, but I don't think so. You're not fiery enough. I'm not fiery enough? You're not like, you're too centered to be a Sagittarius. I don't think everyone's ever accused me of being centered. <laughs> All right. I don't think you're a Libra. That's correct. There's only so many left. So I feel like you're, I feel like you are either an Aquarius or a Capricorn. I'm an Aquarius. Okay. You All right. process of elimination. But that's the thing I was right about which ones you weren't. That That is how I do it generally is like, because I can tell which ones you're not. And then it only leaves a few because my thought of, Capricorn, because you do have a bit of stoicness to you, um, but also that could be your rising sign. That could be your Mars. Ooh, bitch. Do you want to do your full chart? You want me to read you to shit? I had someone do that recently. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you see how excited I got? I gripped the chair. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it's a, I won I won a full chart reading at a, a comedy show a couple months back. That sounds – okay, so that means you know your full chart. I don't remember it. Oh, my God. I am a drink and a half in, and we're talking astrology. I am not staying on track of what I came here to do, and I'm thrilled. Yeah, no one, <laughs> no one ever does. No okay. one ever does. So you don't remember your chart at all? No. I should have because it's like, you know, this is L.A., and it probably would help me with my dating. But Okay, so I don't – I need to look up. Okay, cafe astrology. Oh no. Natal chart. If you ever need to look up someone's birth chart, just go to cafeastrology.com and you tell that bitch what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, someone did a whole chart reading for me and it was like an hour consultation. I just was hung over and I was like, oh, these are the kind of women I should you know, go after. And then it went in one ear and out the other. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I mean, I feel like like I like astrology as far as like figuring out about yourself, but I feel like someone telling you who you should be with based on your chart right after meeting you is like, meh, you know. I mean, there, it's it's all just how it plays out because like there's a lot of out like yes, potentially like the moon and all that does affect us. It affects the fucking tide. So, mm -hmm. but also alcohol can affect a lot of things too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Historically, I have a lot of proof on how this affects things. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, okay, so... This is not anecdotal on how these things go. So are you a January or a February of February. Oh my God, what's your birthday? February 9th. It's on IMDb, so I don't mind doxing myself on that one. What year? 81. I'm fucking old. My sibling is an Aquarius, um, February 14th. So just a few days after you, 81. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I fucking love Aquariuses and I get along very well with y'all. Some people don't get along well with Aquariuses. That's their problem. <laughs> um, just because uh, like, I, so like one of the Aquarius things is like sometimes Aquariuses can be kind of like shy or standoffish or just a little bit like, um, you, you know, just like some, some people might not know how to communicate with an Aquarius just because they are too serious and they, they're not like wanting to have like, like, oh, let's, let's reach to the far off grasps of our, of our thoughts and have hypotheticals and stuff. That sounds like their fucking problem. Um, okay, do you know what time you were born? Uh, in the morning. Okay, do you know what city you were born in? I do. I'm not trying to dox myself that hard. You're just type it in. <laughs> like, this is going on the internet. <laughs> You're going to find the hospital you were born in, get your tiny little footprints. Right? Oh, I love this. This is my favorite thing. <laughs> I, I hope the audience is enjoying it. They're just like... Slayer's reading on the inter on the podcast. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. So your son is in Aquarius. Did you like hear that little gurgle in my throat? I did. It bothered you that much, huh? <laughs> um, okay, so your sun sign is in Aquarius. Uh, your son is kind of your basic building block of like who you are, what your jam is. If it was in a bar in the seventies, that's you know my opener. Like I'm an Aquarius baby, you know. Ooh, wavy. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna read part of this. Uh, those born under the sun sign of Aquarius is their unwillingness to follow the beaten track. With advancement and progress on their minds, there can be an irreverence to old and outdated ways of thinking and doing things. Hence the lack of bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aquarius is a fixed sign that can get stuck in their own ways. Oh, yeah. I, I trip over my own dick all the time. So you can be uh, stubborn, strong uh, feelings, idealism that runs strong. So like I was saying before, it says often a bit aloof and even standoffish. Uh, Aquarians, nonetheless, are usually very well liked. They are curious and observant, tolerant in a broad sense. Prejudice and bias are offensive to the typical Aquarius. Um, so that's why I don't want to end up in a camp from the robots. Like, <laughs> I think a lot of people don't want to end up in the robot camp. You're like my Aquarius mind can't flow freely when you put me in this in this AI in this AI camp. Yeah, exactly. Where they're trying I'm to glad we're on the same page. Force here. me to do jazz hands. <laughs> right? Like, oof. there is a TikTok out there that Melissa Stratton posted that we did after the podcast, and you can see how awkward my jazz hands are right in that TikTok. She even mm -hmm. captured it like I should stick to podcasting, and she is right. <laughs> it's that, uh, like that thing on 30 Rock where Liz Lemon gets a TV show and she's like, I'm going to be on TV. And everyone goes, don't you mean radio? <laughs> she goes, why does everyone keep saying that? Um, so yeah, as an Aquarius, you're really about like building community and reaching people and spreading new ideas and breaking down outdated um, ways of doing things. Mercury and Pisces. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, just a, a quick, quick tangent on, on the 30 Rock front. Did you ever see the meme of, Kanye's quotes was starting with Liz Lemon. No. Oh, yeah. There's a whole meme of if you read Kanye's tweets, but start them with Liz Lemon. That sounds amazing. I need to go do that immediately because, like, I love 30 Rock and I love in a very specific, <laughs> in a very specific way with many, many, many notes. Yeah. Many footnotes. Love Kanye. Just just in a way where it's like, look at you, you crazy bipolar bitch. Look at you go. Like, as someone with bipolar, I'm just like, 
okay. Like we can achieve shit. It's literally, it's just like, ah, oh, we can dream. We can achieve our goals if we just shove them down people's throats. If you work a little harder, you can impregnate a Kardashian too. You know what I mean? Like we can dream big, even if you have uh, bipolar, BPD. You got you got the sad. Sometimes you can still you can still get a Kardashian pregnant if you try hard enough and wear enough interesting jumpsuits and, and make fucking plumbuses for Pornhub Awards. Plumbuses? Are you, do you never watch Rick and Morty? No. Okay, but <laughs> it's a thing. And the first annual Pornhub Awards, when those awards were fucking crazy, uh-huh. I, I was just like. They made a fucking plumbus. It's, it's, ah, oh, oh, like the the like um, and they look like those little blobby guys. Yeah, let me just Google what a plumbus is for you, really quick. Okay. I totally sidetracked you on my chart reading. No, no, you're. I'm literally sitting here like chortling to myself, like a little bit drunk as I read your astrology chart, and I keep burping into your microphone. It's okay. I'm so sorry, and at some point, I'm not going to be sorry. I'm going to start. Belching. That's a plumbus. Oh. And were, <laughs> you saw the original Pornhub oh, Awards. I remember. Yeah, it was like a little thing with a thing in the Yeah, thing. I'm like, holy fuck, the Pornhub Awards are plumbuses. I thought it looked like a musical note. Like an eighth note or something. <laughs> I didn't think they were that witty. <laughs> I don't know what they were supposed to be. Well, were they supposed to be like a serotonin? I just was like... They it's just, a plumbus? It's just not a plumbus. You know that. It's just not a Kanye-themed plumbus. I mean, of course, they don't want to get sued by Dan Harmon. Yeah, yeah, I just got to change it a little bit. I mean, from... from this is original intellectual property. This is not stolen. <laughs> um, Yeah, not a Rick and... Like, I, I've enjoyed Rick and Morty when other people put it on, but it's never been something that I put on. And, yeah, that's my story about Rick and Morty. Um, Back to... Oh, sorry. Back to telling you about... My life. And- Your life. Okay, so you have Mercury and Pisces. So Mercury is communication style and the way that you process information. You have Mercury and Pisces. So Wait a minute, I process information? Mm. So- I can't do math. <laughs> I don't even know what long and short division is anymore. Because you have a Mercury and Pisces, so you're just a little dumb bitch and it's okay. So, Which I'm pretty. Yes. So, so Mercury and Pisces. So Pisces are very creative. They're very dreamy. They're often said to be kind of lost in the dream world, and they can be very squishy and soft and sensitive. So That's just my gut. (laughs) Well, so if you communicate like a Pisces, that means that you probably don't communicate in very aggressive ways. You're very empathetic when you communicate, and you want to make sure that everyone that you're speaking to knows that you are there for them and not trying to hurt them and just want to uh, reach understanding with them. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> there are definitely some ex-girlfriends that may disagree with you on that. Okay, well, so that's the thing, though, with the fucking Pisces Mercury, that would mean that you could be extraordinarily passive-aggressive. That I'm have, actually not. And have a huge, uh, like, martyr complex if you feel like you're not being properly understood, possibly. Yeah, not so much the martyr complex, but not so much passive aggressive. It's just aggressive. Just aggressive. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like what the story I was talking about before we got on air. Like, oh no, 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 I, I'm going to get vengeance, and like I, I will happily communicate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get vengeance. Let me no, see. Nothing like having to communicate to Scientologists that like I'm getting vengeance. They're like justice. I'm like, no, this is vengeance. <laughs> This is spite and vengeance right now. Oh my gosh! For for the audience, so like I'll let you in on the inside joke. My car got hit. And, my parked car got hit and run and totaled a couple of days ago. And as some of you are aware, some of you may not be because you may be new and just here for Casey. I was a private investigator for a number of years, so I used my skills and I tracked down the hit and run driver. I got his license plate. I got an eyewitness, and I have footage of the accident. And I had to go to the Church of Scientology. I had to brave Scientology for my goals. Wait, why did... I didn't know that you had to go to the Church of Scientology. Yes, because the Celebrity Center is a couple blocks from here. And the first cameras I saw, they traveled towards the Celebrity Center. (gasps) So as I canvassed up the block, checking, getting people to check cameras for me, Scientology has amazing coverage. Yeah, I friggin' bet. Actually, I found out Scientology has really scary coverage. I freaking bet. Like, Scientology is blocks from here. 
apparently on one of their camera angles, blocks from here, they caught the whole accident on camera. I friggin' bet. Like, on one hand, that's cool. Thank you for helping, Scientologists. Like, on the other hand, I hope they never really discover who I am because I have definitely talked some shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure you're probably pretty low down on the list of people they need to. Yeah, for now, for now. Maybe one day when 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 the viewership goes up a little bit, they'll be like, <laughs> Did "We help that motherfucker." God damn it! It's gonna you're gonna become the most popular podcast for the Scientologists. Uh, that's definitely not happening. I believe in you know psychology and drugs. I love psychology and drugs. I, I definitely believe it. Like, it was a, a very interesting conversation with like one of the Scientologists who was just like, we talked, ended up talking about mass shooters and he was just like, oh, well, you know, they're on pharmaceuticals and like, that's what's driving them. I'm like, I, just, I need footage from you. I need footage. From, oh, I'm, golly. I'm going to smile and nod because I, I need footage from you. Like, I cannot, cannot, cannot smile. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you go, let's talk about math and astrology now. <laughs> Let's not. Um, okay, so I just want to yeah, no, no, wrap I, this up real quick. I, I, you have an Aquarius Venus, which is also what my mom has. She cute? That's such a weird question to ask about my sweet, sweet mother. I, as we discussed before, we all got here through sex. Okay. My mother's name is Ruth. She's a delightful lady. She is adorable. She is not a sex pot. How do you know? Have you asked? I, I've seen her. I've seen her. She existed before you. She is not. No. She is a wonderful woman. I bet that my mom. The cut hands are coming any second. Now. <laughs> she probably gives the best blowjobs of anyone on earth. I'll report back. But I don't think that she does it with a ton of flair. I mean. I'm not looking for like flair bartending here. Like I, I don't, I don't need like bottles juggled. You want to just like land, like hold the dick on the arm and like tilt it and set it on fire real quick with a spritz of lime. Right. Like I, I, I'm, I'm here for end results. I don't, I don't need like the razzle dazzle. Well, so she's, I mean, she's divorced, but she's not single. She's Is dating. She faithful. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you asked? No, but I know she is. How do you know? Because I know my mother. Do you really know anyone? Sweet, tiny Ruth. I know her. We've met. I mean, maybe she could be tempted by the fruit of another. <laughs> tempted, but the fruit is discovered. What's been going on since you've been gone? There's no other? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. See, I'm old too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, no, my mom's delightful. And, I, and she probably gives great head. Okay. Well, I'm trying to report back. She's not hot. I wouldn't say my mom is hot. Every, beauty is only a light switch away. She would be hot if she got hotted up, but, like, she's she she doesn't, like, wake up being like, let's be a slut today. That sounds like a challenge. Like everyone else's mom who wakes up going, let's be a slut. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. I'm going to wake up. Sit up fucking straight up in bed like the fucking undertaker. Just go, let's be a slut today. Honestly, that's the energy I need to be bringing into this year. Because, like, I have not been getting fucked enough, let me tell you. Why not? Because I do things like say, I've had enough sex. I get it. It's whatever. And then I also go, I hate everyone. And I also do things like wear shorts with sewn-in mesh underwear. Well, first and foremost, you don't necessarily have to like people to have sex with them. Okay. I, I'm, are you a never nude? I don't think you are. I think there's video proof that you've been naked on the internet before. I have. I currently have the sexual charisma of a never nude. That's what I mean. I'm like, that's why I'm not getting laid. Like, I've, I, I, a few years ago, I was with my friend at a strip club. I'm sitting at the strip club, and I'm, and I'm going, where are the hot boys? I want to be hit on. Where's the cute boys? And then I, I look around at the situation and I have a woman in a little schoolgirl skirt sitting on my lap while I feed her a lollipop. And I'm like, and this is why I can't catch a cock because I'm saying one thing, but then I'm having like hot sluts on my lap. And I mean, I, I feel like that 
should have you had bait on your lap. That's what I mean. That's how stupid I am. But I'm I'm but the thing on your lap should have brought boys too. I some like it's because I sit there with my sleeveless tank top and my muscles and the boys get scared. Well, stop trying to, you know, have sex with scaredy boys. I don't have sex with scared. See, that's the th I'm just like I'm just I'm just not giving off the energy of someone that should be fucked right now. When it happens, it happens. But I think part of it is me waking up like the Undertaker and going, "Let's be a slut today." I just haven't been slutty enough. I, I hate to bring it to you, non sluts get laid too. Do they? I've been led to believe. I mean, I may have slept with someone who's not a slut in their life. Maybe. Shit. Well, so I think that the non sluts act slutty to get. The, the sex. Not necessarily. Then how do they have sex with each other? Um, romance and, you know, the kissing. But that's sluttiness. Romance is sluttiness. Is it though? It is. It's cute. It's wholesome sluttiness. Romance is just sluttiness that someone made wholesome. Hmm. Well, then, yeah. Then I have no, I, I have no answers for you. I, I, I was trying to. To be a problem solver. <laughs> you have defeated it. Yeah, I just want to complain. Feel free. Thank you. Like, I, I'm here for it. I'm recording it even. And so now I'm going to go back to, okay. So. Back, to, back to my chart. You're like, enough yes. about my lack of sexual woes. <laughs> like, See, I just want to complain. That's the thing. I'm like, like, so, okay. Why don't you just book someone to fuck then? So, okay. Oh, God, this is great. Okay, so I have gotten to the point pretty much where I'm like, if I want to have sex, I should probably just pay for it at this point. Like hire an escort, some obnoxiously attractive person to just go down on me for an hour and then I'll feed them a turnip and send them on their way. A you know? turnip? A turnip? Uh, I've just been really into turnips lately. They're good. But what if they want a radish? Okay. I'll take them to Sprouts afterwards. They can pick out. What if they don't want to be seen in public with you? We can do Instacart. I have an Instacart subscription. After you give me head, or while you're giving me head, I'll say, would you like a turnip or a radish? I'll order it. And then by the time that I've come, the Instacart will have dropped off I your just, produce. I just got a vision of someone like with a 12 pack and, and a thong answering the door for your Instacart. Like, yeah, just all sweaty. You're just like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can jump in too and, and help feed the radish to my my sex worker um okay so see we've gone gone on a oh, yeah, very no, no. interesting tangent Tangents just happen on the show all the fucking time so basically it's like i i want to get fucked but also i don't want any of the complications right what are the complications well usually so it's either like someone that's actively dating me and the last time that happened, it just completely derailed my like work everything and just made me like lose focus of all my work stuff. Why were you so in love? I mean, pretty much kind of, yeah. Not like, oh my God, I was so in love. But like, yeah, when you're, when you're like busy making out with someone, you're not focused on, oh, yeah, no. on work stuff. That's the classic... Bukowski quote that I'm probably going to butcher right now is like, any man can chase tail. It takes dedication to get on the typewriter. Yeah, no, literally. Exactly. So I'm kind of at the point where I like that quote. I'm going to look that up and find the actual one um, and then say it to other people. Uh, but yeah, like I, I, I think that sex is such an easy hole to fall down. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it like a sex pun, but I did. Um it's an easy hole to fall down and an easy temptation. So on one hand, I would like to be fucked because it's a good stress release and it's easy. I mean, yeah, it releases endorphins and shit. Yeah. And it's it's also like, you know, I've, so I was saying to my friend the other day, like there's a certain spot in my back that in my mind can only be stretched like and properly like relaxed if I'm getting like fucked from behind, you know, like a certain arch of the back where then it'll crack my back in a certain way. But that's just not realistic to like count on another human being that has their whole life going on to like satisfy a very specific need of mine. 
And in the past, I have rather irresponsibly assumed that sex partners of mine are and should be okay with, you know, just fucking me and... I mean, they should be as long as that's the expectation set up at the beginning. Right. So granted, the times when people have gotten pissy, it's because they won't just, like, tell me they want to date me. They get mad that I'm not doing something that they're not telling me they want from me. They're like, I want emotional validation. Why are you not giving it to me? We didn't discuss this, but... Why are you not giving right. it to me? They're like, you only like me for my dick. And I'm like, you have never asked me on a date or introduced me to your friends or like said that you wanted anything other oh, than God. sex. I, I, I did someone for a second. Like I, we banged and she crashed her while she was in town shooting scenes. And like at one point I ended up like dating, banging one of her friends and she called me crying. Like you two betrayed me. I'm like, what? <laughs> we, You crashed her and we had sex a bunch. Like, what? You have never communicated to me. This yeah. was anything besides orgasms. Yeah, and, I, and I've heard stuff like that from so many people. And I think that that comes from a culture of, you know, building sex up to be something that it is not necessarily um, and not allowing people to talk about their sexual relationships openly, openly and not consider other options like hiring sex workers as legitimate and non-shameful form of sexual pleasure because that's where I'm at now where I'm like, you know, it would be nice to have someone to be physically intimate with in a sexual way because obviously, you know, I can cuddle with my friends, I can do whatever, but, you know, having someone's tongue up your ass is a separate thing, but that also... Wait a minute, that's not how you're supposed to cuddle? <laughs> that's the good cuddling. Um, that's I mean, the that's... properly lubricated cuddling. <laughs> right? Um, but you know, like if, if I'm trying to focus right now on my work and I, unless some perfect situation falls into my lap where someone is great in bed with me and also has the exact same business goals as me, which I just don't see as a realistic like option, just plopping into my lap that I'm like, well, I should probably just focus on my work. Well, I mean, you got to be open to it plopping in your lap. I know, and that's why I'm going to start waking up every morning like The Undertaker and saying, let's be a slut today. Um, but that's the thing, though. I'm also like, maybe it would be better for me. Sorry, keep going. I, I, I found the actual quote. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, maybe it would just be better if I focus on my work and hire an escort, you know, like, and not try and push the part of my human brain that's like, but you need someone that's going to do all the things. No one can do all the things. Exactly. That's why I'm like, I should find the best sex haver and then the best at all the other things. Well, that's why I constantly criticize people who are like, oh, I need someone to completely. No, motherfucker, yeah. you should be complete. You should be looking for an awesome plus one. Exactly. Exactly. Very much so. So the actual quote, I horribly paraphrased it apparently is any asshole can chase a skirt. Art takes discipline. Literally that. Oh, fuck. Any asshole can chase a skirt. Art takes discipline. So that's why I'm like right now, I'm like just trying to ride out the waves of horny because that like that energy and that motivation and the fact that I've been brought here in my life to work in this industry, it's like I've I got in this industry to make art, not just to fuck, you know, like... I I definitely wanted to fuck, but the the thing that I'm interested in is the art that can be made. But I just don't think that at this point we live in a society, especially in America, where people are ready to create the type of art that I would be interested in making. Well, the problem with this industry, this art, this art form compared to almost every other artic artistic expression on the internet, is this art is business first. Was that all gin? It was all gin. I mean, I watched you just pour gin in there and not pour lemonade in there. But this this art specifically is business first. Mm -hmm. Like modern Hollywood mainstream movies have definitely gotten there, but there was a point where, and if you still have enough clout in mainstream Hollywood, you can create an artistic vision. It's like, I mean... James Franco, unfortunately, is you know, not persona non grata at this point. Mm -hmm. But 
I supported everything him and Seth Rogen made together. I may not have necessarily liked the content, but they were at least making original IP in Hollywood yeah. versus as much as I enjoy Marvel movies, recycled IP, safe bets. Yeah. And I understand. Really motivated by financial gain and the profit at the end. Right. It's like, yeah. I understand it cost the GDP of some countries to make this movie. Mm -hmm. I understand you don't want to risk that kind of money on something that is not going to be surefire. Mm -hmm. But movies are so much better when people take risks. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, th I think that art has gotten to a place in music, movies, porn, just just everything where it's just so focused on the profit right right immediately. Like, you, you, you know, nothing is even going to be greenlit if there's not an immediate profit guarantee. Um, and yeah. it stifles artistic creation. I disagree with you on music because music, we are – in an amazing time where like what we are doing right now, 15 years ago would have been tens of thousands of dollars to accomplish. So we are at a point where kids can create beats on a laptop mm -hmm. and create whatever artistic, it may not be played on the radio. It may not be as commercially viable as other stuff, yeah. but they can absolutely create new art for next to nothing. So, and so here's the thing. And that's like, I love that because, so that's the thing, like in, because in mainstream music, like, yes, there's access. And also because there's not necessarily a visual associated with it. No one can tell that you're just making it in your, your basement versus in a $10 million uh, music studio. Um, but then also, you know, like the, the mainstream studios are, completely profit-based for the most part. Um, but they have to be at the point. Right, of course. And so that's why it's like with these mainstream porn companies, it's the same way. The only way that they're able to pay the rent for the studios, the rates for all these people that they're hiring is to be completely profit-focused, say, you know, fuck any sort of creativity that goes outside the bounds of what will definitely make money. Well, and that's part of the problem with porn in general is like, with music, if you're an underground artist, you're creating music, one, you can do it as cheaply, pretty fucking cheaply. Two, even if you are not physically selling your music, you're not moving streams, you're not making money, you could potentially make money from merchandise touring. Mm -hmm. There are other avenues. And like the touring model for adult performers is only when you're a top tier performer, you can feature dance. Right. So we don't have the, the ability to go out and like hit the road and like, hit clubs and fucking generate revenue, live out of a van and promote your art that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so, and, and I think that part of the reason why that doesn't exist and hopefully what this group fair will maybe oh, look alleviate the a bit, right? Like segways. Um, is like that sort of infrastructure is not, um, necessarily made for the smaller creator because th like the you know there's the big the big studios that run everything and then there's sites like many vids and only fans or loyal fans or whatever smaller sites like that but then because it's such a deeply individualist uh community and like everyone's job is so specific to them and especially after OnlyFans started and the pandemic and everyone is locked inside. Everyone got really good at running their own business and protecting their own. Not everybody. <laughs> well, not everybody, but it became very important to learn how to I mean, run your own brand and see yourself as an individual creator. Honestly, it's been that way for the last five or six years. People were just not willing to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like anytime I have anyone who's like, oh, I want to get an industry. I'm like, you ready to run your own production house? And when they're like, huh? I'm like, don't do it. Right. And so and so that's the thing. Like with uh, like these smaller studios are – well, I mean, that's the thing. I say smaller studios. They're these individual creators. They're small studios. At that point, when you are generating that amount of revenue, you have this many viewers, you have this many followers, you know, you're surpassing major mainstream studios. You are a studio now. And because there's no – uh, infrastructure within the industry that, you know, there's obviously lots of groups, organizations that are having rules and regulations, but there's so many new people in the industry that don't even realize that they're technically a whole studio. And it 
it it doesn't do anything to help create a framework of economy for people to work within. Well, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And one of the things I like, I, I was just talking to a, a top tier OnlyFans creator who she's like, I'm an amateur. I'm like, you make way too much money to be an amateur. We need to like start identifying people as indie creators. Like there's indie film in mainstream. Yeah. There, like indie film in mainstream doesn't mean there's not multi-million dollar budgets behind it. Mm -hmm. But it's indie. We need yeah. to like embrace that like there are indie creators in this industry. Yeah, absolutely. And and that it's it's legitimate. And just because you don't have the stamp of approval from the mainstream industry that's been around for however long, you know, we're in a new day and age with online content creation where, yeah, like all of these new online creators that these mainstream studios are picking off and asking to direct or feature, or come model over here. Because or during the pandemic, like, can you create content at home for us to monetize? Exactly, exactly. And all of those companies are you know, picking off these creators with huge followings because they know that they can profit off of what these creators are developing with their own brands. But because, I mean, like last night I was, I was telling someone who was helping a friend set up for like their first content shoot ever. And I was like, do you guys have 2257s? You, you got model releases? You got your tests? And they're like, oh, oh gosh, okay. Like, let's do that. And it's like, you know. Well, this is one of my biggest criticism in the industry forever is there is no porno one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. So, and that's the thing. And there are groups that are doing a lot to advocate for sex worker rights and get information resources to sex workers. But, um, so basically I realized that th a lot of these groups are so busy creating the resource and providing space um, to theoretically be used by the industry, but the outreach to the actual models is not happening enough. Like a lot of models don't know about the resources that are available to them. And a lot of resources are just very lacking as far as just being what the models need. Like if it's not actually useful to the performers and it's not useful to the people that are supposed to be you know, profiting off of these resources, it's not useful and it's a waste of money and it's a waste of time. Um, and things like, you know, just a very basic guide to consent and douching and enemying and testing and just, you know, really just the basics. It's, it's really mind-blowing that it doesn't exist. And I mean, I shouldn't say it doesn't exist because there are a lot of resources online that. But if you don't know those resources exist, they might as well not. Exactly, and that's and and that's the thing because there's there's all these resources scattered throughout the industry, scattered throughout online. And that a lot of these new performers also, if you only got in through OnlyFans, a lot of these people have never even met anyone that's worked a day on a professional set. But also, if you're brand new, how do you know what resources to trust? Right, because also. Agents, for the most part, are not really hooking their models up with with any mentors, with any um, with any groups outside of. Well, it's not in their best interest to. Exactly, because for agents to be able to have as as much control over their rosters as possible, they need to be the main contact for their models and have their models know that I am the only one that can help you. I'm the one with all the information. But then there's so much. Just, just an endless amount of information that's not being given to these models, um, whether they be in mainstream or just only like OnlyFans or many vids or uh, you know do you, indie creators. Do you creators. feel like OnlyFans has a responsibility to onboard people better? Honestly, no, not really. I think that if if OnlyFans was to have a help page, maybe with with resources if people are looking into it. But I feel like it's kind of the same thing as like, like Facebook, like Facebook doesn't send you, I mean, or MySpace sent you the thing where it's like, hi, I'm that dude. I'm Tom. I'm Tom. Right. Exactly. So like maybe, yeah, there should be like a Tom or just like if you need well, help. If OnlyFans had a resource page with like, these are trusted resources, mm -hmm. then OnlyFans models could know who to trust. Because it's like, if I Google, you know, I need help getting into porn. Mm -hmm. Lord knows what's going to come. Actually, I'm going to Google it right now. Well, so here, that's the thing. That's literally what I did when I was in college that year. I Googled how to get into porn. I looked up everything I could. That's why 
I moved to the San Fernando Valley. I went to I'm the I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to the Latata website and I messaged all the agents and they started calling me and that's how I got in. And I think so that's why I'm like I don't necessarily think that websites like OnlyFans or ManyVids or Loyal Fans have a strict responsibility to provide resources for models because they're just websites. They're just hosting websites versus something like an agent who is sworn and licensed to hopefully. Well, I mean, not hopefully. They are sworn and licensed. Well, oh. I mean, some of them are not licensed. That was exactly yeah, my point. Yeah. Like, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, OnlyFans should be giving back to their community. Oh, absolutely. And allow, give people trusted, vetted resources. Because the problem is, you know as well as I do, you get hooked up with the wrong people mm -hmm. and shit can go real sideways real fast. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, th I think the only reason I feel like there's a large distinction between uh, OnlyFans' responsibility versus mainstream agents' responsibility is because, like, OnlyFans has never been for anything other than profit, and they've never pretended to be for anything other than profit. So if you are joining OnlyFans as an individual creator, you are assuming the responsibility of, I am taking control of every part of this. I'm yeah, doing but YouTube research. has resources for their creators. That's true. So realistically, and so, yeah. So OnlyFans should have because if, more resources. But the thing too is, what are those resources? I don't know. Put a little effort in and do some research, OnlyFans. You have connects in this industry. Well, right. But so, and I think that's, that's the thing though. It's like, which resources would OnlyFans be sending to their models? And I think that there is a lack of actual guidelines and resources. Like it, it should be easier if someone says, I want to get into the industry and just send them a link to one page that has all this different information. But you and I both know, that, like say that was your page, the amount of drama that would come from why are this into Casey's page? Not my, no. So that's why I wanted to have fair be a completely non Casey thing. So fair and Sunday fair and anything coming from it is not my party. It is not my event. It is for the industry, by the industry, literally whatever people need. Also, I am, I'm currently the only one sitting in this chair, but I'm not the only person that's been planning fair. There are a ton of people. Oh no, no, no. there's millions um, of bacteria sitting in that chair too. Oh hush. <laughs> I'm taking them all with me. Oh no, they're um, on your skin. It's okay. But so, so that's the thing. Something that I had been aware of is Anytime an individual performer or creator will go online and try to bring accountability to certain issues, it ends up being a massively huge emotional toll for that person because it's too much to take the entire stress um, of, you know, usually some sort of abuse for the industry onto your own back. We've seen it happen with all these different models who... I mean, Twitter's exploding right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's... And I'm I'm glad. I, I honestly absolutely love um, the way that that account did it because the importance of anonymity with stuff like that is so important. Um, it it cannot be on one person. We can't have like you know a scapegoat for the industry. There can't be like a friggin' martyr Jesus type looking person. It can't be just one. Well, they can look like Jesus. We can all have our robes and our long hippie hair. Um, and love fees and just um, and lick each other's feet. Um, I mean, I didn't know that's how I washed them, but okay. <laughs> um, that's why you dunk under the water. The licking it happens. Or once again, the sacrilege. Um, that happens here fairly often. I'm I'm sure shenanigans. Um, but oh my gosh. This is what happens when there's an Adderall shortage, and I can't remember what I was just talking about. Um, well, you're talking about Sunday Fair and it being for everyone oh, and not just being for Casey. Not just for Casey. It's not Casey's event. Um, so, yeah, like I, I feel like in the industry, there's a lack of community and togetherness and really creating a face for the industry that is not behind one certain studio or one certain industry or one certain person that's all based on who's popular in the moment because it's a very validation-based industry we all just want to jerk off for a living you know 
Um, <laughs> I mean, just verbally, but... <laughs> right, in some way or another, we're all stroking the ego. I, honestly, that's kind of the bummer of, like, where things like Pornstar Karaoke went away, because, like, that used to be a thing that, like, the industry could just go fucking do. Right, so... Love that you bring that up. Porn star karaoke is actually something that we are starting back up again. Um, I won't say any specific dates, but uh, we are planning on having the first of the resurgence um, potentially next week, but maybe starting uh, this coming month. But that's the thing. Stuff like porn star karaoke, um, different charity events, beach days, just kind of anything that is a way for people in the industry, allies, family members, friends, people that are just interested in supporting a community that wants to move forward in a world and a universe where people can just be okay with sex and sex work and not... Wait, people are okay with sex? <laughs> Sometimes, if you if you walk very slowly and don't make direct eye contact... People will be okay with sex and sex work. Yeah, people get really weirded out when I make eye contact while we're having sex. Okay. Like, literally, that used to be one of my things. I'd just be like, uh, see, I can have a dude, like, 10 inches deep on camera, but eye contact, nah. He's I looking at me with my real eyes. Yeah, it's so intimate. It's so much intimacy. That's where the real penetration happens. You're like, oh, my God, no. He's um, looking into my soul. Yeah, it's too much sometimes. Um, but yeah, stuff like porn star karaoke, just kind of like any, any way for people to get together that's not based around one person's party, one person's following something, you Some know. award show. Exactly. Where it's like everybody's drunk and dressed up or. I do love XRCO though. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. All those events are amazing and everyone loves getting dressed up and getting together. But like, like I miss so much years ago where. The industry was so tiny. Everyone knew each other. And because, like, everyone was tested, we all knew who was working. Like, we know you just have random parties where, you know, everyone was technically invited and there'd just be random orgies breaking out. And it would just be fun. Like, it was so fun because people knew each other and we were all held to a certain standard of professionalism and testing. And, yes, there were bad bad apples in, in bunches, but it was to a certain degree sometimes easier to get rid of those people because we were all bonded together and aware of what was going on in everyone's lives. Unfortunately, some of those people also stuck around like a goddamn cancer. Yep. Some of those people are very much still around and they shouldn't be, but they are. But hopefully, like, I I feel like if 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 enough people get together and just decide that we've had enough and put our foot down, it shouldn't be difficult to, you know get some get some get some work done in the industry like yeah. like having agents background check models like that's a very very basic but the question is what is the criteria for that background check so and so here's the thing that's one of those subjects that realistically it would need to be figured out in an enormous group format where anyone that has an opinion would be involved where we say, okay, what do we as a community feel is acceptable and not acceptable to be let into this industry to be around vulnerable people in a sexually, you know, vulnerable environment? Like, if you have been uh, arrested for sexually violent crimes, you cannot work in child care, you cannot work in health care, you cannot work in elder care. And it's not to say that sex workers are inherently a vulnerable group of people, but a lot of the time, you know, like there's, you know, 19-year-old women who are being paid $20,000 a month who have never had that money, never had the responsibility of handling everything themselves. And if and some, they have the Gucci bags to prove it. The Gucci bags to prove it. And if someone swoops in and decides that they want to run your life, they're going to be your boyfriend now. They're going to mm, tell you how to run your money. Exactly. Just the amount of people like that that like to hover around the industry to take advantage of people is absolutely ridiculous. Um, uh, how do you... Okay, so we vet somebody. We background check them. Uh, and then well, they get involved with the suitcase pimp. What, are we going to be like, you're out, you're, out, you're done? Because No. Well, so, so for example, for me, for example, let's just say, so I met a man two years ago about, right? He was represented by a major studio, right? Not major studio, major agency. So I started dating him. I go, oh, what a lovely, cute boy. He's represented by a studio, must be a legitimate man. 
tries to murder me, spends all my money, does the whole thing where you're like a not chill dude, you know? And then once I get him out of my house, I find, oh, look, all these mugshots, violent crime. Oh, look, he fucked a 12-year-old. Oh, look, another violent sexual crime. Oh, look, he tried to murder that other woman. Super chill. He's really not good at it. Yeah. <laughs> very good at the trying part and the traumatizing people part. Not very good at the, like... Successfully murdering people. Like, well, I don't, how do you not be able to murder a 12-year-old? I just... No, he was fucking the 12-year-old trying to murder grown women. Oh, uh, okay. Like, 12-year-olds are easy to murder. People. So, allegedly. I don't allegedly. think the murder was ever the goal. It's the, like, no one will be my mommy and tell me I'm a special, perfect little boy. You know, it's that. That's what happens. If, if, if a lady doesn't tell you you're a special, perfect boy, sometimes ladies, you know... I've, I don't think I've ever had a lady tell me I was a special, perfect boy, and I'm okay with that. Good. Look I, at you. I, I actually might, like, wig out and leave if a woman told me I was a special person. Like, there's something wrong here. I, I, I gotta go. Like, and, and that's how we know that you're probably not a criminal. Probably. I've never been arrested. Well, so that's the thing. So, I mean, and, and here's the thing. So I'm good at not getting caught. Oh, so. if, if someone has no arrest record, that doesn't mean anything, right? Oh, definitely not. But... We, at the very least, as an industry, in my opinion, and only my opinion, I don't think that if, if if you just got out of jail for raping someone, I don't think that you need to be making money in sex work. So the question is, do we discriminate against people that have arrest records or convictions? Because technically in America, you're innocent until proven guilty. So I, for me, personally, for my soul and personal only emotions, I would say that if you have been arrested or convicted regardless for specific crimes. So for example, if you were arrested for fraud, I don't fucking care. If you were arrested for robbing someone, I don't care. If you were arrested- Fraud, fraud I definitely actually care about because those are the type of people that are going to fake tests. Those are the kind of people that- Well, so, and, and so here's the thing that this is when at the, the public forum, you would say, hey- but what about this? And we all murmur and go, hmm, 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 that's a good point. You know what I mean? Like, this is the kind of person like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get your fucking content trade contact back to you. And then all of a sudden it's edited, published, and you haven't fucking even got well, your... So here's the thing. So maybe, because for me, for my personal experience and my emotions, I go, okay, if you have been arrested or convicted for kid fucking, trying to murder women folk people or raping folks... You can't you can't make money doing sex work at least through a licensed agency. You know, like it's but plenty of people are self booking, right? And so here's the thing, though, that is something where you know down the line we can figure it out. Like it, it, it's it's never going to be oh if we impose this rule it solves everything. That's not how it works. Oh, but definitely I, not. But I feel like the the immediate gratification and the self masturbation of you know, the current world society and specifically this industry, the kind of, you know, the, oh, but that, what about this? What about that? What about that? Well, let's talk about it. Let's actually have these conversations. And instead of people screaming at each other online for literally just having, like, literally, like if someone goes, oh, but what about this? We're online. That could end up in a screaming argument as opposed to a actual functioning, useful, productive conversation where we figure something out. Because if at the end of the day, all we both want is to prevent abusers from being able to move freely in this industry, we have to start somewhere. So if we can all agree on, you know, a few simple little rules, put those into place, see how it works out, and then move on from there. But when people get overwhelmed and angry and then jump all the way to what is the end goal of solution where there is no abuse, everyone's perfectly happy and a billionaire. Won't exist. It, it's unrealistic. That's but not how to, how to you know, have progress. Whatever happens, it has to be universally enforced is part of the problem because there are cliques. There are, there are people. That... Thank you. I'm so classy. <laughs> Low is a class. There are cliques. There are people like, People have agendas. People have personal vendettas. Mm -hmm. So if things are not universally enforced, people are going to claim this is bullshit, it's biased, mm -hmm. and it will never work mm -hmm. if it's not across the fucking board because, mm -hmm. oh, why does X person get to stay? Because they have 20 AVNs or 
<laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's that's a really big thing that this industry needs to start um, being more firm on is calling things across the board where it's like, even if this person is very popular, we think they're great. I mean, how long did Ron get to exist? So that's the thing. It's like, if I, I think that, you know, starting out with things that are so completely legal and moving from there is at least a place to start because. Oh, I agree. It's start. I'm just, mm-hmm. It just, yeah, sorry, yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, I mean, it, like, it literally just takes everyone putting their foot down at the same time and deciding that we're going to put our foot down and not, you know. It's like herding cats. Yeah, it is. It is exactly like herding cats, but that's the thing. That's what I do for a living, and I'm really good at it. I'm so good at wrangling. I see it's herding cats. I call it wrangling whores, which I can say. Cause tomato, I'm, tomato. Yeah. Tomato, <laughs> exactly. tomato. But I have I feel like... It all involves pussy. So uh, the way that I have kind of, um, back to my long-winded history of my entire life. So the idea for FAIR kind of started out as like, I wanted to have a farmer's market and just have a very normal farmer's market where people buy candles and peaches and whatever. Ribs? Do they buy ribs? Like the candy? No, ribs. Oh, ribs? Sure, we can have a ribs booth. Um, and then I'll, I'll eat them for you. <laughs> I'll tell you how good they are. And I will, I'll go, okay, open your mouth so I can breathe it in while you have it in your mouth. I, I'll make that content for you. Like yeah. I, I, I will happily even let you film that. Yeah. I do that to people. I go chew with your mouth open so I can breathe it. I, I will order some blood cells and breathe that. <laughs> Delicious. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll have a barbecue, uh, by proxy night. It'll be good. I'm in. I, I don't do sex work, but I'll do that. <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of that would totally be a service. People like on a diet, but they want to smell cake. Um, I could do that. I I could do that for people. That would be great. That's a good service. Um, so yeah, I wanted a farmer's market and then like sneak sexual health products and sneak sexual health testing in to kind of, you know, get people used to having sexual wellness products and services in a format that they were used to. Like take some Narcan too. Exactly. Right. Be like, oh, you know, buy some radishes, radishes again, buy some radishes, buy a little shirt and then learn about Narcan and and kind of incorporate sexual wellness into a format that people are already comfortable with. And then the idea after that was um, a more like exclusive ticketed networking event for sex workers and other people. Um, But then just the logistics of like finding locations that aren't going to be weird about like potential sex things happening um, and not like force us to use their security and, and stuff like that became difficult. And then just seeing people online at each other's throats uh, all wanting to solve the same problems, all caring about the same things, all concerned about the same issues in the industry, but just tearing one another apart because we've been so built up into these deeply individualistic, you know, self-promoting mini studios, basically, and forgetting that we're all here for the same purpose. We're all fighting against the same enemies when it comes to, you know, banking corporations shutting down our accounts, uh, stuff like Instagram or Twitter shutting down our accounts, facing, um, you know, like housing discrimination. And that's also just for like mainstream performers. That's not even to mention street-based sex workers who might not have the same resources that people who work in studio porn have. Um, So I just felt like there was a real need for people getting together with no agenda other than being together to remember that we are a part of the same community. Same thing as stuff like Porn Star Karaoke, where the entire purpose is fun and everyone is invited. There'll be no fun in pornography. Come on. (laughs) What? No. Right? Like we can be serious and have fun if we do it, if we do it properly. No, Um, there will be no fun. There is no fun (laughs) in porn. I know. I will make sure there is fun in porn. I'm out. out. We must have fun in porn. If there's going to be fun in porn, I'm out. No, bye. Goodbye. You take your incredibly, incredible updated uh, sound system with you and you can 
You cannot have fun on the road. There will road. be no fun in pornography. No fun. That'll be your no fun in porn 2024. 23. We're doing this now. Now. I mean, there's there are seven months left in this year. I had to think about that. You're on a strong no fun no platform. Fun. No, only in porn. It would be fun elsewhere. Anywhere else <laughs> no but fun. porn. You know what? Honestly, yeah, let's get down to business. 2023 is the year of no fun in porn because we're just getting our shit together. It'd be fun to see. <laughs> be the, I, I, I've the been around. Get down to business. I've been around a long time, mm-hmm. and like, if if it could happen, amazing. I, I just, I'm old. I'm jaded. I, I know. And so, and so, I I kind of realized, like, I think a lot of people that have been in the industry for a long time have been fighting a certain fight for a long, long, long time. And the fight has evolved. Like, it's a completely different fight that's happening and a completely different, like, troops that we have access to with all these new OnlyFans creators. And it's something that I'm only now starting to, like, really educate myself on and get more aware of is all of these creators that have never set foot on a mainstream set, have never, you know, maybe even met someone in mainstream porn, but are an enormous creator with an enormous following and enormous revenue in their own right. But it's one of those things where like the problem with trying to like unionize a shop where there's inequality in earnings. Why is the 0.03% OnlyFans creator going to stick their neck out for the OnlyFans creator who makes $160 a month? So that's the thing. I'm like, I... I'm just going to count on people's goodness. That's and I know, sh- Well, oof. so so here's the thing. I I know that a lot of people are not interested in doing anything other than whatever is going to benefit themselves. Um and a lot of people are not going to do anything that even resembles charity or handouts or community. But I think, I I don't know. I just think that there are enough people that, my God, I'm going to like start fucking crying. I love this industry so fucking much. I'm glad I have cameras going. Oh, God. Clench, clench, clench. I'm going to fucking cry. Oh, no. Don't actually cry. Don't. <laughs> I cry all the time, though. I'm just like such an emotional person. I think that there's so much passion in this industry. And I think that the people that care about making this industry a good place, care enough that some asshole that makes a few million dollars that doesn't care about sex workers and the little person, like their energy is not needed anyways. If all that they are able to accomplish is building money and followers off of an industry full of people that they never cared about, then their power never meant anything in the first place when it comes to us. It shouldn't, but perception is reality. And if they're perceived to have mm-hmm. real influence, people will still allow them to have influence. Oh, absolutely. And they'll still have influence. But at the end of the day, whoever is interested in making sure that the regulations around sex work are safe for sex workers are going to be with sex workers. Someone that is on OnlyFans selling pussy, making a million dollars, who doesn't care about sex workers they're not aligned with sex workers. So whatever headline they're making, realistically, if they, so if someone is on OnlyFans making a shitload of money and they're not saying or doing anything, but a bunch of people who are on OnlyFans and are in sex work are, you know, passing around a certain form of paperwork to make sure that we're all regulated you know, saying, hey, make sure you're tested, make sure you're tested. And also like these regulations, if it's literally just paperwork and testing, people don't want to look bad. You know, they don't want to look like they're being like shitty criminals. Um, so even if they are, even if they are, but certain, certain asks of the industry are not enormous, you know? Um, hell our testing standards are all self-regulated in the first place. I mean, Basically, what we really need is fear of government oversight to get people to actually do some shit. Right. And so I think that people are not as – 
people are not focused on the government regulations that are coming towards us in a realistic way. Um, you know, it's like everyone's fighting over little issues here, but a huge, huge wave. Well, Fausta Sessa, like, passed, and, like, it didn't change all that much except fuck a lot of people. Yeah. And, like, it... Yes, people definitely were up in arms about it. People were definitely not happy about it, but what is our actually been unified response to it? Right, and so... And that's the thing, too. Like, um, I think that there's way too much response in the industry and not enough uh like preemptive action as far as oh forethought whoa whoa <laughs> preventing whoa. issues before they pop up bonkers i know it's so fucking crazy like whoa whoa what, but, a, what a crazy concept but yeah i feel like if if enough people get together not even enough just a few a few of the right people and the right vocal people right and i think I don't know. I, I I just think there's there is so much passion in the industry. Just so much passion and intelligence and vigor. And I just don't think that people have necessarily been given the proper outlet to voice that. Um, and I think that you know, like we're we're so much stronger together than we are separately. And I don't think that the industry has really been given a proper format to join together and decide what we want our message to be as far as, you know, self-made media, like a, a a newspaper by the industry for the industry or a job site by the industry for the industry. Just all these different ways that we can really strengthen the industry from within, give, give strength from ourselves to one another instead of these uh, people outside of the industry that we feel like we have to rely on to give us certain resources or, you know, like camera work or, you know, like, oh, I need this person to do this thing. Well, why not learn to do that with your friends? Like, you know, self-produce, create art, not just for profit, but because you care about creating something with other people and, you know, make something. But that's the difference in there's different people's different motivation for being here. Some people are just here for the profit. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing. And, and that motivation, realistically, it's like if you're just here for the profit, then you should care about things like the testing, the paperwork, the legal back end of it, and stuff like banking discrimination, shutdowns from different banks or from Instagram or having your money uh, taken away on uh, PayPal or having your OnlyFans shut down. Um and that's the thing, like, no matter what your reason for being in the industry is, like, you're here at the end of the day and you are now facing discrimination based on your job. So whether it's because you want to create art and cry into other people's eyeballs or because you just want to make a shitload of money, we should all be able to do that freely as any other industry or at least, you know, be oppressed the same way that other industries are being oppressed. I, I wholeheartedly agree. And it also took mainstream cinema a long time to get there. Like, people died making mainstream films back in the day a lot. Mm -hmm. So we're relatively young as a legitimate industry. Yeah. And that's honestly part of the problem in the grand scheme of things with this industry is a lot of the dinosaurs from when this was truly an outlaw industry are still here. Yeah. So they can't adapt to not being outlaws anymore. Right. Yes. Okay. So love you bringing up the word outlaw because that's something that I will say. I'm like, I feel like there's a very outlaw energy, a very like, ooh, I'm on the skirts of society. I'm figuring out how to slip, slip underneath the regulations of mainstream legitimate society. Um and that's just not what it is anymore. That's not the the game that we're playing. Vivid had a fucking you could see the vivid sign from the 101. For I remember fuck's driving sake. past it, yeah. For fuck's sake. You're not an outlaw industry when the biggest company in the industry at the time has a sign you can see from the highway. Right. And it's like there's there's more and more mainstream media 
eyes on the industry as as well as government eyes on the industry. All these regulations happening, friggin' Utah, um, the, the laws just passed in Virginia, I think. Um, and, oh God, the ADD happened again. My brain just went blank. Um, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Can you say what you're saying? About our being an outlaw industry? Yes. Okay. So uh, these these laws that are coming down to regulate the industry and people keep kind of trying to slip away and, and dodge and duck. And that's not how it works. Like the wave is going to come crashing down on you whether or not you want it to. And there's no no shadows to hide in anymore. And doing things like sitting down and figuring out what we as an industry want our safety to look like needs to happen because doing things like hiding from hiding from OSHA and hiding from Oh, you don't have to hide from OSHA, they're underfunded. <laughs> like they don't have their binoculars well, anymore. No, no, anyways. literally they, they decide they went we don't have enough money to enforce prop 60. Well, and so here's the thing, stuff like being afraid of government entities that don't even have the funding to properly enforce the laws that we're afraid of. Well, and the fuck part is Prop 60 only gets enforced when you have a disgruntled employee. Like everyone I know who has been, because I know a couple people that have been hit with Prop 60 fines have been disgruntled emplo uh, employees of some flavor reporting them to OSHA. That makes sense. And like, I know some people that were hit with six-figure fines over it. But that's the industry cannibalizing itself right there. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's the thing. The like, because there's no infrastructure, there's you know, there's there's nowhere to no one to talk to. No, right. there's no arbitration to be had. Like, hey, you had a shit time on this set for this production company. Well, you you feel like you have been wronged, and if your agent's not willing to make waves, mm -hmm. what do you do at that point? Well, guess what? Some of them called fucking OSHA. Mm -hmm. And like, there were no condoms used here. Mm -hmm. But it definitely doesn't benefit the whole industry in the long run for that to be your only recourse to having a bad experience. Right. And I'm not saying either side is right or, well, I'm not saying being disgruntled, you may have had a legitimate reason for being disgruntled, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be like the answer to like, hey, I'm going to try to financially cripple yeah. And that's the thing. It's sad that that is the only recourse that some people have to solving some problems. Because realistically, what are you going to do if there's, if your agents, if the studio, if the producers, if no one cares, and the only government entity that is theoretically there to protect anyone is going to screw everyone over and they are not even checking in on anything. Like there's just, there's just nothing. There's nothing. And I think, you know, we, we've been given this fresh opportunity with these thousands of new performers from OnlyFans who are also elongating the lifespan of people in the adult industry because it used to be less than a year. Being in the industry for over a year was... I mean, six months was like the... Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been around for over a decade. Do you know how many people I've seen come and go? Yeah. No, I'm, I've, I've been on... It'll be, it'll be nine years this summer for me. And it's... It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, like I got in 2010, 2011. So it's just like mm -hmm. the people I worked with, none of them yeah. when I got in. Or actually, that's a lie. Well, one of them, one of them is still around, but almost everyone else, long gone. Right, and it's like with these new OnlyFans creators and these new uh, content creators, it, there's longevity. There are people that are, you know, I feel like now it's it's more like. Two, three years is is the general for people being in the industry or longer. But what's crazy is if you're not in California or New Hampshire, technically you may be committing a crime making OnlyFans content. Right. And so that's one of the things that like people don't know about the like, and I tell this to people all the time, like if you're not shooting with shooting permits, which no one has. If you're not shooting with shooting permits, if you're not getting the proper testing, if you're not filling out your 2257s, which also the model releases that we have, if you're not having the proper shooting, you know, documents for where the location is that you're shooting, that kind of potentially could null and void the rest of your paperwork. Well, and what the fuck would Film LA's response even be if someone got a real permit? Seriously, like... <laughs> you're like... 
For real? Are well, you but sure? Also, you'd run into the giant hassle of Film a LA has insurance requirements that no set has. Right. Like, when was the last time you were on a set where you're like, can we see your insurance for this set? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of the things I like to remind performers of that almost nobody fucking knows is, you know, if you're on an underinsured set, you're technically, your agent is liable with workers' comp insurance if you're injured on that set. Yeah. Almost no one knows that. And that's the thing. So there's all of these uh, responsibilities that are held by the agents that are like the models don't know about. There's all of these responsibilities that are technically supposed to be upheld by the studios that models don't know about. I mean, technically by AB5, we're all supposed to be employees of productions when we get hired on for a shoot. Less, I mean, it's really kind of skirting around the letter of the law for AB5 to do a B2B to hire someone who's a you know an LLC or a C Corp. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, technically, we're all supposed to be employees of the production when you are hired onto a set. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's all these layers of... Uh, Bureaucracy and... Right, that we're supposed to be abiding by, but because for so long the industry was this secret little, you know, in the shadows. It's an outlaw industry. Very much so. It was fine to get away with that. And like, I've, you know, I've been, you know, guilty of not being as up to code with my paperwork, with my close personal friends as I should be years and years ago, because we go, don't sue me, don't sue me, bippity bop. And it's fine. Until you have a falling out two exactly. years later. Exactly. Exactly. And especially now in this day and age, like just the other week, I was talking to a woman who does OnlyFans, kind of more like thirst trappy OnlyFans. And I was talking about this and she goes, oh yeah, I'm being sued right now. And I'm like, that's what I mean. Like you could be 20 years old getting sued by another 20 year old because you didn't fill out paperwork and it shouldn't be happening. And it's like, that's not something that you should be having to deal with because there's no there's no guidelines there's no infrastructure but it's it makes sense it's a completely fresh new industry it's it's a wild west to be you know mined and tapped and figure out what these rules are but we as an industry have a responsibility to do that and and all these people that have been in the industry for a long time have these strong opinions have all this information and this knowledge and wisdom about their experience in the industry have a responsibility to hold themselves to a certain level of professionalism and figure Whoa. these rules out. <laughs> Do not tell me I have fucking responsibility. <laughs> Just because I, I am an old fucking resource and I know, like, unfortunately know way too much about how the business of this shit works. Do so, not put me, make me responsible for so shit. here's the thing. I tell dick jokes. Because I've realized that. I'm like, y'all, y'all, old fogies. <laughs> if you want to label yourself as such, I will take you I'll put you in a beanbag chair. You will be fed snacks and treats and give pats on the head and give juice boxes. We will not bother you. In, like, you could just get to yell facts from the corner. I mean, I, that's why have you, you've been on this podcast for two hours. Have I not been doing that the last two hours? <laughs> so that's what I mean. Because I've realized I'm like the people that I've spoken to who have been fighting the fight for a long, long time, who've been in the industry a long time. Like, I fucking get it. I've been in here a long ass time too. I'm tired. I'm angry. But I also have an unceasing well of optimism and cheerfulness inside of me that I will use. I also, uh, like, I, I I occupy a weird space in the industry where, like, because I've never been a performer, I'm an occasional set, like, set worker. Like, mm -hmm. but because of my own ambitions over the years, like, that's why I know all the laws and regs. Because there's points where I've wanted to start productions and, like, wanted to, like, do it the right way. So I just educated myself on fucking everything I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, fuck, I'm an actual resource on this shit. But I, I I tell dick jokes on the internet. Like <laughs> no, it's good. Okay, so for example, here's the thing. Like something for fair that the team and I have been talking about is, for example, writing like a sex work 101, and not you know not necessarily for escorting, maybe not for maybe just for production, like right. porn production, whether it be mainstream or uh, personal content, um, and just have a very basic 101 of like, this is not the end all be all, figure it out for yourself. But like, psyllium husk is good for anal. This is good. Well, you number know? one should be like, if you're not comfortable with it, say something. Well, right. So, yeah. so you know, if we as a group together get, you know, consent rules together and get the legal, the legal shit together so people know, hey, 
you know, you... If you see a syphilitic penis, don't put it inside you. Well, yeah. So rules like that, very important. And a lot of people, like, don't get to have the, the like, one-on-one or even just community experience with other people in the industry to, like, learn these things. So, for example, like, I'll start bothering you to help out with fair things. We'll write the... See, you've expressed interest, so now you're trapped um, <laughs> in this community web of shenanigan. Um, uh, but... It sounds like so much effort. So, it's fun. <laughs> I think we have different definitions of fun. It'll be drinks and butts. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, butts like the butts I like are subjective. Like, I'm not. We'll I, have so many subjective butts. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I'm. I mean, I, I made no promises besides showing up for the first one. So, um. Well, just my thought is that if enough people that know anything in the industry or have any passion get together we can figure some stuff out oh i don't know anything that's cool oh my god shut up you have just been you have been exhibiting your knowledge of things you cannot now see this is what i mean it's not time to be lazy it's time to fucking it's always time to be lazy no it's always time to be lazy we work hard and then we laze better than anyone else yeah I, i i i'm doing this podcast then laze like I'm spent. Spent. Well, yeah, and you're doing it, and now we're we're collecting the information. I mean, we'll the, the, it, 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 it will be published to the internet, like all every like you know gem of wisdom that has been spouted by both of us this evening will be put on the internet. See, it would be cute if you did like a live podcast. Oh, you don't want me live at fair. You don't want me doing it live because I'll say horrible things that I need to edit out. Like what? Say them all now. No, I don't want to have to edit them. <laughs> Just have nice like try. Nice a try. solid five minutes of bleeping. Ugh, the things I've had to edit over the years. <laughs> things I've had to edit. I've had to remove whole guests from episodes. Well, so first of all, like something that we've been doing is having like peer-led classes. Uh, so for example, having a one-on 101 podcasting class like intro to podcasting. So you could explain like, oh, you know, you're going to want audio. Here's how you set up your audio. You want me to just give away fucking resources? Yes, that's the whole thing. Well, so like that's- that's There were 45 podcasts against me for a best adult podcast at AVN this year. Do you think I want another 40 of them next year? (laughs) Oh, there's 85 of them. God damn. Well, so, I mean, that's the thing. That's one of the reasons too that I started FAIR because- I have like the amount of people's businesses that have been helped and started with my help and abilities where it's like, oh, the entire concept for that or all of the that or all that came from me because I just want to help other people's projects. I want this industry to grow. Like I just want to see everything that this industry has to offer flourish and be as large as possible and just take space. In, in all reality, I'm actually down to help podcasters because I'm very much of the opinion that cream rises to the top. Mm-hmm. No, and I, and I know you are, and I know you're just being <laughs> silly, but that, that's the thing. It's like I think that like this industry, like if we if we all just kind of help each other become the best versions of ourselves, then we can really like just we're so hot, we're so cool, and we're so hot, and we're so smart. Like people in sex work are fucking cooler and smarter than anybody else. Like if you made your way into this industry, you're literally a sexy genius. Like everyone. Oh, no, no. I'm actually of the opinion that most people in this industry are not cool. They're a bunch of nerds. Bunch of fucking nerds. Okay. So yes. Like yes. But like also hot geniuses. Oh, I'm not saying that <laughs> people are unintelligent. I, when I first got in, it was just like kind of mind boggling. Like, oh. Y'all a bunch of misfits like me. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm a huge... That's what I've always said. I'm like, it's literally just an island of misfits uh, uh, that figured uh, out how to make it work. I'm on record saying very similar things. Yeah. Many many times. It was just like... But like from an outsider as coming from being a civilian to like, yo, in the industry, it's just like, but these are hot people that have sex. Like they're, they're all... Oh, no. None of you are cool. Oh, yeah. No. It's... We're all just like... I mean, I'm going to the Renaissance Fair this coming weekend. 
with another porn star who is equally excited about going to the Renaissance Fair. Like, we're all massive fucking nerds. Oh, no, I play d d with a bunch of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just, we're, that's the thing. That's, like, the secret. We're all just, like, aggressively nerdy, but, like, made it work. We're, like, just cute enough to, like, make it work. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm just, I don't know. I just really believe in, I just believe in people and the industry and just, I, I feel like there's so many projects that if people just collaborated a little bit more, it, it would just be such good synergy and turn into such like undeniable progress and undeniable power and beauty from within the industry. Well, just the fear is, and it's unfounded fear, that a lot of people don't think there's enough fucking you know, pie to go around. That's I think that's what drives a lot of it is a lot of people just especially in this day and age where people can't fully survive on studio work. Mm -hmm. People just you know like oh but if I help someone else they they, they may take my booking or right. it's well, an unfounded fear. So I mean that's the thing and I totally understand that and that's something that I think that now that I've been because I'm a production manager, I direct now and produce, and I'm you I'm know, available for non sex roles. Um, you can just be in the background when I'm directing, just go woo yeah. I mean, I'll be I, like I, yeah, I that. suck that dick, and then I'll pan over to you, and be like yeah. I mean, I do have an AVN nomination for best non sex performance. I love it. Did not know that. No, I didn't know <laughs> yep, that. 2018 best non sex performance nominee. Oh my gosh! And Expos that year, so best non sex. The best non-sex performance. What was no, it for? Jews love black cock. I played the rabbi. Were you the cock-loving Jew? No, my daughters were. Okay. Porn titles that cannot be made anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, that's... Wait, was Jews love cock? Black cock. This, like literally shit like that is why I stopped filming mainstream porn because I was oh, like, I that can't. That was not a mainstream production. That was a Burning Angel production. That's that's mainstream. Now they were not owned by Gamma at that point. It's it's still mainstream. It's been since the second that it became popular, it's been mainstream. Mainstream just means popular and well funded, not like. Oh, I've worked on a bunch of BA sets. Joanna, don't hate me. It's not well funded. At least it wasn't. I mean, just be it, just because you're wearing a lot of eyeliner doesn't mean you're not mainstream porn. That's mainstream porn. Just because, you know, it's the cool kids doesn't mean it's not mainstream porn. It's mainstream porn. Um, you got the best nomination for non-sex in a mainstream porn. Yeah, I didn't win, though. I didn't fucking win. But, an, I mean, I didn't win best blowjob, but I still get best blowjob, and I got a nomination. So. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm the best, you know... Hell, the only reason I was nominated that year is because Tommy Pistol's not Jewish. Because Joanna was very adamant about everyone who did not have a black cock actually being Jewish. Well, yeah, of course. So I'm like, well, because she's Jewish. Yeah, yeah. See, I feel like this is a very good time and a good podcast. I'm going to make direct eye contact with the camera now. I am looking for a Jewish husband. If you are a Jewish man or woman or person or whatever, but like if you are Jewish and you would like to get it, get it on. Let me know. Okay. It's just my. I, I just feel like this is like the place we've we've been talking a lot about Judaism. I know it was just a, an awkward call, call out at the end of the like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't think that there is any. I, I I just feel like a piece of meat at the moment. Just a piece of meat. I already told you. I. Cannot be inside you. I just want to have. I just want to. I already told you. I just. Well, the, I'm out. I'm not. I'm nice. <laughs> You're not though. nice. <laughs> you know, Peter. What, what? Peter, we're gonna get married. We can text him right now and let him know. <laughs> Peter knows he's my baby. I also. My boss is also Jewish. Well, yeah. I mean, I we just collect Jewish men and I call them my babies and I take care of them. I mean, we 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 run entertainment. It's a thing. That's why I said earlier. Like, are we in a meeting? Oh, see, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm not picking up on any of your jokes. I'm just purely focused on my deep, pure 
love for for Jewish men and women, everyone. But I, I will go back to the film. You definitely laughed at my joke. So <laughs> were you in? Were you in Peter's? Juicy? Uh, no. Juicy? Nice. No. no. Um. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys are doing the important work to make sure that all of the Jewish people in the Jewish themed porn is Jewish. Hey, I just got cast. Like literally I've known Joanna forever. Cause like be is part of the way I got into this industry. And like, Joanna's like, Matt, can you act? I'm like, yeah, I can act. I, I'm sure I can act. What's up. And yeah, that's how I got cast. And like, it was literally a text message of, can you act? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've done a couple other, like, yeah, I do non-sex roles every once in a while. Like, I played Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's funny. And I, and I, you know, and then one, cause they're like, we need a podcaster, Matt. Can you come play a podcaster? I'm like, yes, I can come play a podcaster. I think I'm capable of playing a podcaster. <laughs> It'd be funny if you just sat down to play a podcaster and you just start freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. What's my motivation? I mean, I ask that about actually podcasting all the time, but. You just start freaking out the second you sit down. Person goes, "Oh my god!" Oh no, it's about a half hour before the guest gets here. It's just like, why am I doing this? <laughs> Who is this person? Fuck. And that's when you light the cigar. Uh, it's part of the pre-show ritual. I mean, that's good. I used to, I used to smoke a, a black and mild. That's not a cigar. After it's a baby cigar. It tastes like a rolled up tube of potpourri, and I love it. I would smoke that after doing sex work things. I would go, nothing like puffing down a stogie after sucking cock for money. I will take your word for it. <laughs> Seeing as I have never sucked a cock for free or money. You should do it sometime. Really very little interest. If I was financially compensated well enough, I would do it very unenthusiastically. See, I'm like, I kind of feel like everyone, because I've eaten pussy and sucked cock, obviously. It's It saddens me that people will go to their graves never having done one or the other. Well, I've eaten a lot of pussy. Yeah, but like... Wouldn't you just suck one dick once for the experience before you die? Not really. Like it, it's, and it's like on a conscious level, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just one of those things where it's just like, I have no desire to because I, I, I have no interest in sexually gratif gratifying another man. So yeah. it's like it's just one of those things where like. Yeah, no, I get it. It's like you have no desire to. I feel like just like right now in my head, I'm like imagining being like. You're imagining yeah. me sucking dick right now. No, I get no, it. no. I'm like, okay. I'm, I mean, it's okay I'm if you old, do because that'd be hilarious. I'm like 95. I'm an old man. I've never sucked dick. And I'm laying in my deathbed. And I'm just thinking like, I wondered what dick feels like in your mouth. And then I just die. And then you never get to know. I mean, I've definitely tried to get my own in my mouth at times, but. Good. I appreciate you acknowledging that because every man has. Okay. Every man so has. So when men say, when penis owning humans tell me that they have not tried to suck their own dick, lies. Lies. And also weird. Like if you have a dick and you haven't tried to suck it, you're probably a criminal. I mean, I, I don't know if that's a crime. But like if you're the type of sick, twisted fuck that's not going to try and suck your own dick. But here, here's the criminal. deal. Here's the deal. Like, Especially when I was growing up, even admitting to masturbation was a less than situation. Because a lot, a lot of dudes were like, "Yo, you can't get pussy, so you got to jerk off." Even though everyone jerks off, mm -hmm. so it there's a lot of like that's a whole part of toxic masculinity that people don't talk about is like the the fear of acknowledging. Like, oh, no, no, I Sometimes I do things that just, I want to feel good. Like, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So that's, that's the thing. It's like uh, with with male sexuality, this idea that it's like you are only a sexually legitimate human if you're fucking like 80 women a month with no emotion. That sounds exhausting. And, right. It's like, you know, nobody needs that. That's too much. Um, 
But yeah, there's there's just all of these like sexual rules that are put on people. Like I don't none of the rules that we live by that have to do with gender or sex have to like really do anything with what we feel. No, it's the hypocrisy of like if I bang 80 women this month, I'm a player. But if you bang 80 dudes, you're a whore and a slut and that's yeah. a negative. Yeah. And that's the thing, like all of all of the uh societal uh, feelings that people have regarding sex are so outdated, just so outdated. No one actually uh, likes them or aligns with them. Even the people that are like, you know, Bible thumping whoever's in uh, wherever. They're just keeping up with the Joneses. They're not happy either. They're not actually. But it's the expectations. So. Exactly. So I feel like a lot of people, especially like after coming out of lockdown during the pandemic, everyone had a lot of like time to think and figure out how they feel about certain expectations that are put on them, like a lot of people are looking for something else, are aware that the way that we've been doing things are not aligned with their true passions and desires. Um, but there's no real alternative. Like you were saying, like with Scientology, like that's the most recent attempt that like humans have had at like making something new. Or like, I mean, I wouldn't even say goop. Like goop by Gwyneth Paltrow is more of just like a aesthetic lifestyle thing but but also like i feel like that's in a way what the goal of this fair group is is to kind of show this is the lifestyle that you can be living if you acknowledge sex and sexuality and sex work not as some ridiculous you know, headline making, inflammatory topic, but literally just incorporated into life and e economy and sociology and the way that we treat e one another normally, you know, just like absorb it and be normal with it. And like, look, we can make money from here. We can find pleasure in all these different ways. We can not judge ourselves from feeling pleasure because again, America was based on Christian Protestant puritanical standards. bullshit. Exactly. It's which not is, even Christian Protestants. It's Puritans that ran away from Europe because they're prudes. Yeah. Well, it's it's the Puritan Protestants, which is literally based on no feeling. So you are not allowed to feel. You're not allowed to have autonomy over your sexuality. You have to give that to the church. The church tells you you can get married, have a baby, have sex. And that's the only way that you're allowed to filter your sexual desire. And that's the most powerful thing that any human being has inside themselves. It's the driving force. So if you wrangle that, you take it away from people and force them to buy it back bit by bit in a format that is pleasing to the government that's in power at the moment, no human being is going to have control or power of themselves. No one will have true freedom because the only thing that is guiding you is something that is controlled by the governing body that doesn't have your best interests in, in mind. Nope. They would just want you to spend and consume. Right. Exactly. Like we, we worship uh, consumerism, capitalism that only feeds, you know, the people at top. It's, it's not actually helping. Well, because America is full of impoverished millionaires. So I figure, you know, like if, if the industry can at least get together and, figure out some very, just the basics, just some very basics. Cause there's, there's next to nothing, you know, there's people get in the industry. They don't even realize they have to fill out paperwork and, and it's a federal law. Yeah, It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that confusing. It shouldn't be that difficult. And as an industry, I would just, I would love for more self-regulation to be happening so that once all these government uh, entities start really barreling down and telling us how to run our industry, we are able to actually come back and say, hey, we have this in place, this in place, this in place, because the regulations that are currently in place are old. They're so old. And all these people that are getting into the industry through OnlyFans have no idea about how the mainstream industry is running itself. So even the mainstream industry saying we are the most legitimate ones, we are the ones to listen to, doesn't hold the same weight that it used to because if these OnlyFans creators are making more money than people in mainstream, they have more viewers. A lot more. Yeah. 
then, then it's like at a certain point you have to acknowledge that that's where the the power is is flowing. And I definitely had to get over my own jadedness and my own anginess of being like, oh, so you're telling me if I had like held out, you know, seven years and not shot porn for seven years, I could be making X amount of money never having to go to do studio porn if I had just waited out until the stigma died down a little bit to where I was like, oh, I won't ruin my chances of doing whatever. Yeah, um, you would have also had to be a time traveler or been able to predict the future for that to happen. Right. So I am not Doctor Who, so alas. Um, the pandemic is a fixed point in time. I don't know. Right, but like, so that's the thing, like get like not being um, divisive and not being separatist and not, you know, being uh, exclusionary towards different types of sex workers, you know, the hierarchy, as we call it. Um, it just doesn't serve the main purpose of the people in the industry, which is to generate, uh, you know, like economic liberation and say, like, we are a legitimate industry. We have these laws that have been created, or I shouldn't say laws, these rules that have been created and enforced by the industry while the government does fuck all and doesn't actually care about the real issues plaguing the industry, like abuse and, uh, you know, wage disparity and testing disparity. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's just time for people to stop complaining and really start doing something. And a, a, a place to start for that is just getting everyone together for some karaoke and movies and DIY planting and arts and crafts and yoga and just getting people together to remind everyone that we are a community, we are bonded by the same thing. And yes, we all have to fight for our own individual, you know, businesses as creators, but that's the same as any other industry. And we don't need to be tearing ourselves apart. I mean, fuck, look at the WGA. Those are all independent, you know, workers, but they're all out striking right now and fucking running amok. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like, we we should be able to do that because we are hotter than everyone. I mean, there's some hot writers. Yeah, but we're hotter than them. Mm, not all. Uh, if they were hotter, they would be doing porn. I, I definitely think, depending on what you're writing for, you make a lot more money writing. But if they were hotter, they'd be doing porn. They might be physically attractive, but they're probably not good at sucking dick. If you're writing for a mainstream show and not porn, you're not that good in bed. I will go out to the picket lines and do some research. <laughs> See, I'm like, I found a new hill to die on. <laughs> he said, like, if you were good at sex, you'd be doing porn. I'm sorry. Like, it, like, yeah, okay, I've found a new hill to die on. Yeah, that's, I genuinely believe that. Like, I'm sorry, if you're not in porn, you're not good at sex. If you were good at sex, you'd be in porn. Or you'd be fucking whoa, whoa. porn stars. You're saying, you're saying I'm not good at sex because I've never had sex on film. No, you're in porn. You're like, you're here though. But I've never had sex on film. So, but you're in porn. Yeah. Why are you arguing with me that you're bad in bed? I like keeping expectations low. <laughs> I like surprising people. But that's why you're not performing. Oh, no, I'm not performing because I don't think I can get it up with someone standing like me with a boom mic over me. <laughs> so every time you have sex, there's a boom mic? No, I'm saying I don't. No, I'm saying I don't think I could get it up with. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you have to shoot porn. I'm saying that you're good at sex because you're involved in porn. If you are a moth that flew to the fuck light, there's a reason. Yeah, because I didn't know any mainstream filmmakers and I met people who did porn. Because you're a slut and you're probably good in bed. I like keeping expectations low. You're a slut who likes keeping expectations low. Well, yeah, like it's fun to pleasantly surprise people. Yeah. Like, oh, no, it's going to be mediocre. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like that's kind of the same as me. Like, I'm an absolute goober right up until the sex is about to happen. And then it's like, oh, shit. Like, I feel like that's probably how it happens for, like, people about to fuck. Like, it slows down. Like, you know. Like, it's a life-altering experience. <laughs> you know, they go, oh, shit, it's happening. And I'm like, Rrr. yeah. And I, like, my, like, I go. Your knit, your knit pants come off and. 
my knit. Look, the knit. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> my uh, my mesh. Yeah. My mesh under pantaloons. Yes. Yeah. They're really great because I can just wash them every day and rewear them. Sounds like it's not conserving water very well. It is. I just like, I take the underwear part and I'll like wash it. Okay. And then like let it dry. Okay. Because it's like, it's like quick dry fabric because they're like workout shorts. They're like running shorts. Oh, oh okay. I'll so they dry really fast. I'm not trying to deny your science. A little, maybe a little. But Casey, believe it or not, we've met this for like two and a half hours. <laughs> so I'm going to call last call before I have like a year of post-production work on this. Okay. I did a, like a barely good job of the reason that I was going to be on here. Um, uh, I, I take full credit for that. If you will just make sure that you have the captions, make it seem like we really stayed on topic. That would not be the show. So if you are a member of the adult industry or you are a friend of a member of the adult industry or you simply have respect for the work being done in the adult industry, you are invited to come to Sunday Fair or any of the other events that Fair is going to be hosting. If you are a teacher or an instructor or have any interest in anything, you should come. It's fun. Some of it's a little bit political and angry. Some of it is singing and dancing and laughing and doing face paint and eating cupcakes. You won't know until you show up which one it is. Yeah, literally. That's the whole point. You do whatever you want. It's literally just an open space for people that want to live in a world where people are chill about sex work. Where can they find that? You can find it at sundayfair.com or on Twitter and Instagram at sundayfairla.com. Fair is spelled F. A I R E, like the Renaissance way. Amazing. And Casey, where can they find you? Ugh. Um, I mean, if you want to, you can find me on Twitter at doesn't eat meat and the O is a zero, or on Instagram at real Casey Warner. Awesome. Casey, it was an absolute pleasure. We'll do it again at some point. <laughs> Wonderful. And as always, you can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer. You can find the Patreon with the exclusive content, the uncensored content. You can get the video versions a week early at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. And you can find the podcast at, and now we drink on Twitter, and now we drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. 